call to, to order the meeting of the Brawley City Council and successor agency to Brawley Community Redevelopment Agency. This is our regular meeting agenda for July 6, 2021 at 6 p.m. here in City Council Chambers. We'll have the roll call. Councilmember Nava? Here. Councilmember Castro? Here. Councilmember Wharton? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Couchman? Here. Mayor Hamby? Here. All right, we'll stand for the invocation. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you tonight for this opportunity again to gather together to lead our city, uh, to tackle the issues that are in front of us. We ask that you would give us wisdom and guidance as we go through this agenda tonight. We thank you for the, the safety that you've given our city, that you have protected our, uh, our city employees and our safety personnel. I ask that you would continue to do that, and I ask that you would continue to pour out your blessings on the city of Brawley. We thank you for uh, the wonderful things that are happening here and for the progress that we've been making this year. I ask that you be with us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And uh, Councilman Wharton, will you lead us in the pledge? Be my pleasure. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Item one is the approval of the agenda. Uh, I believe we have a couple of items that we need to pull. Yes, uh, Your Honor. Uh, your, your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's good. Wow. That's good. Hey, he's going to keep that title. Yeah, yeah. He's going to want all of us to add that, add that to the plaque. Go ahead. Here's gonna the Almighty, Mr. Hamby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, item uh, 5, uh, on the, under regular business, item 5L and 5M, we need to pull those two items uh, to co go back to staff for some additional information and clarifications on okay. Make a motion to approve the agenda with the items uh, pulled that were noted by our city manager. There's second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? The agenda is approved. <clears throat> Item two, public appearances and comments, not to exceed four minutes. This is the time for the public to address the council on any item not appearing on the agenda that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city council. The mayor will recognize you. And when you come to the microphone, please state your name for the record. Any public comment? That's like. Good afternoon, um, Mayor Hamby and uh, board members, uh, Tyler, <laughs> city manager, and audience. Uh, on item 11, you in closed session, you have negotiations with Teamsters or labor negotiations. I just want to report that uh, the membership did take a vote today at 3 o'clock, and uh, we went over the proposal, and they ratified and approved the three-year contract. Uh, you will be speaking with Mr. Salcido uh, uh, as to the context of, of it, but we have informally sent him a letter stating that the membership has approved it. Uh, we will formally do the rest of the documentation uh, after, after your meeting and uh, hopefully uh, that you approve the contract. And I really look forward working with Tyler, Shirley, and Carla uh, in, in good faith. As, as we always expect to have that in negotiations and also to work in good faith following through the three-year contract and making sure that um, what is on paper gets executed throughout the years. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm Ruth Duarte with Teamsters Local 542 representing the employees of yeah, City of Bali. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Good afternoon. I'm Norma Schoonover. I know most of you. And for those who don't know me, I am Norma Schoonover. Um, I've been in to talk to Tyler, and my first question was, when was the last time you went and you just rode around our little town? And if you do, you notice a lot of changes, and they aren't necessarily for the good. 
you see lots of people chopping trees down and leaving them sticking eight or ten feet up with no tree on top of it anymore. That's an eyesore. We've got rentals that come into nice areas and then the owners of the rentals don't require them to maintain the yards, keep up any kind of maintenance or anything on it, and that's not right. So one question I would ask of the board is, is there any way that we can put some teeth into rental properties, especially the larger ones, and even some of the apartment buildings? Because some of the apartments that are around here are some of the worst offenders. And they're not doing it out of the goodness of their heart. They're doing it to make money. And I don't think the rest of the city should have to look at a mess because they choose not to. Uh, and then I would also ask about parking that's around town. We've got vehicles, we've got toy haulers, we've got trailers, we've got cars that are unlicensed, we've got cars that have been sitting for months and months and months that have never been ticketed, that are still sitting on our streets. And I don't understand that, and it's not hard to tell which ones they are. They've got the weeds coming up. You can tell you couldn't see through the windshield. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of think that things like that need to be taken care of, or we're going to just be a town that just keeps going downhill. Because once you start the slide, it doesn't stop unless you stop it yourself. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any other public comment? <laughs> Neat glasses these days. <laughs> I got three um, comments this evening. Uh, regarding the fireworks issues, Brawley faces a, a very difficult problem. This dangerous behavior has become a tradition, and I commend the council creating and passing an ordinance. However, it appears to be a more serious problem than anyone expected. I fear this tradition is going to result in property loss and damage. I recommend that you consider it convenient roundtable discussions and public hearings to get public input into this very serious issue. It may be the only way to get control of this serious public threat as a complete ban, but I hope that won't be necessary. The second issue I have is the cell tower. This is a real community problem. I was not a leader in building those ball fields, but my sons and I laid our share, fair share of bricks and used and enjoyed those parks through their formative years. I never thought this council would seek to turn this important city asset into an industrial site. Hmm. For the record, I'm not opposed to the city placing a cell site on its property. What I am opposed to is placing it in the middle of this priceless asset. Just because you think you can do it doesn't mean you should. You really should consider the unintended consequences of this ill-advised project. <clears throat> this cell, cell tower brings forth another topic, which is public meetings, properly agendizing and executing public meetings. I don't know if this is true, but it was brought to my attention by a member of the public that a hearing and a vote on the cell tower project might be done in the same planning commission meeting. I'd like to remind you this is improper. The project should be agendized, brought to the planning commission for discussion, and then brought back for action in the following meeting. I implore you not to follow this course of action. It will certainly become a campaign subject. Uh, Mr. Hamby, for the record, I don't, could you state your name? And for Mark Hamby, Brawley resident. Thank you. Hello. I'm Laura McKenzie, a Brawley resident, Brawley High School teacher. Um, just piggybacking on back of uh, what Mr. Hamby said, I am a parent of boys who use the Little League field, and um, my son's going to be a Brawley High School, hopefully, <laughs> baseball player. Um, and we are just really concerned about the location of the cell phone tower. Um, we're not opposed, like Mr. Hamby said, to cell phone. I mean, I want better cell coverage myself, right? So not opposed to using city property, but that location. Can we find another place? Can we find another area, a better location where we're not taking away from the kids? Because they don't have, you know, 
very many places to have a recreation place. So <clears throat> that's that's my concern. I just wanted to put it on the record. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for that. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. <clears throat> Nicole Rothfleisch, Bali resident, um, here to talk about the cell tower. Um, I'm really glad to know you're going to require the tower company to go through the CUP and CEQA process. Uh, my concern is in regard to the August 4th meeting that I heard about through the news. Um, to do CEQA properly, uh, with all the studies, all of the impacted agencies involved, all of the public hearings, all of the notification requirements, these usually take about a year to get done properly. So um, I look forward to hearing from you on what that August 4th meeting is all about and um, your plan for your process of transparency and how to implement the CEQA process. I know public agencies are required to adopt implementing procedures for administering their responsibilities under CEQA and the state um, issues updated guidelines for that every year. So, and those are supposed to be public documents, so I'll probably be asking for that as well um, to see that document for your plan for implementing CEQA as the lead agency. Um, so just want to make sure we're all going through the process, all the proper procedures, and that this is done correctly and not rushed. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Okay, before I end that, I want to, I see my family's here, and Today is my son Bennett's fifth birthday, Aww. and since Dad has a council meeting, he wanted to come in so we could sing him happy birthday. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So he got a stripe on his belt? I know. Right? Yeah, he got a stripe on his belt at jujitsu. Yep. Oh. That's right. So he brought cupcakes for <laughs> the council members. Oh, wow. So. Thank you. Happy birthday, son. <laughs> so if we could all sing happy birthday, that'd be good. <laughs> oh, actually, yeah. Um, I don't know if it's a good idea to have fire yeah, in council fire chambers, chamber. but maybe <laughs> maybe Chief York can come up and light a candle for a minute. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> how you doing? Yeah, but you have a responsibility to, to make. To, this is a big responsibility, Chief. Yeah, Chief, you better be careful. So, uh oh, you're already yeah. making a mess over here. I have a napkin. Okay. Yeah. There were more cuts. We each get one. Yeah, we each get one. Right. I'll take a bite. You can get a few more than that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Exactly. Okay, well, then. All right. And then we're going to see. <laughs> okay. Thank you, though. Wait, what's he doing? What's he doing? Wait, 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 Hey Bennett, can you show us how to do an arm boy? Yeah. <laughs> Bennett. Uh, Bennett, Mr. Sam's talking to you. Oh. Oh. How much is that one? That's that was five bucks. Oh, <laughs> He's got another birthday. All right, I'll take one down. Yeah. Yeah. He's licking the right. Here you go. Here you go. All right. Yeah. Happy birthday. 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 It's real. Struggle's real, bro. Yeah. Oh, okay. all over, bro. Happy birthday, buddy. Yeah. Some wrinkled napkins. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> 
I'm going to use the hat. Man, you got a crowd. Yeah. <laughs> Life changes. I can see that. Uh, life changes, doesn't it? Life's great. That sugar's hidden. So you know. Yeah. Life. Look at that. Look at my son. <laughs> Look at the mouth. Look at that blue. That's why I got white. I like your mustache. You can see why. I like your mustache. You have a big mustache. <laughs> Where'd you go? Oh, he's gone. All right. Okay. Bye, son. Right. Oh, Bye, you're still there. Buddy. Bye, son. Mm -hmm. Still there. <laughs> I love you. Bye. <laughs> Go buy some candy. <laughs> I'm not. Don't make me call security up here. <laughs> That's the chief. Chief's yeah, security. Yeah, the chief to run the It's going to be embarrassing that the chief's going to have to come up. Can I get him? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Mayor has to Step serve as security. We need a sergeant at arms. Yeah. So I did it all. <laughs> See you later. Bye bye. 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 Good luck. <laughs> bye bye, Mayor. Bye. We have to do the same thing with Luke every now and then, you know, drag him out that way too. It's like, you know, you know. He's the youngest one wrong. No, you're he's younger. You're younger than Luke or you're younger than Luke, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're younger than Luke. I am. I don't look like it, but yeah. yeah. You can't eat your grub cake till after the meeting. All yeah, right. <laughs> you get too hyper. I'm like yeah. ready to tear it up, man. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Moving on to item 2D. Yes. We have a Del Rio Border Link Initiative presentation. This is presented by Louis Wong from Imperial County Office of Education. Second, I'll love the presentation here. Yeah. Good yeah. afternoon, yeah. council members. Uh, thank you for having me here. Good afternoon, Tyler. Uh, Your Honor. <laughs> Your Honor. <laughs> Your Honor, right? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you for having me here. I, I, I have an information item for you this uh, tonight. This is about uh, Borlink. Um, I also want to take the opportunity to do a little bit of a refresher on the Imperial Valley Telecommunications Authority, of which the City Council, the City of Brawley is a proud member of. And mm -hmm. so, um, let me see here. Let me put this in. Let's see if I can see the mouse. Where's the mouse? Oh, there we go. Thank you. Whoever's doing the magic down there. There you go. So if I hit the, okay, there we go. So my name is uh, Luis Wong. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for Imperial County Office of Education. Uh, I've been at the county office for over 20 years and really working on the you know, technology infrastructure. And so we've been working at the concept of broadband for this community for over 20 years. Um, this started off with, uh, as a necessity, you know, really trying to get high speed uh, connectivity to our government institutions, our schools. And uh, we've um, had a long journey. We started this back in, uh, uh, before 2000, there was a lot of work done uh, behind the scenes to try to figure out how we could get broadband and, and do it in a way that was cost effective for the, for the government agencies, for the community. And so we have a strong partnership with IID, leveraging infrastructure. And this, this is really the secret sauce for uh, IVTA, is this really this community coming together to solve a common problem. and doing so and leveraging all our community resources, such as IID, uh, the, the, uh, the member agencies, the cities, county, uh, schools as well. So we started this JPA project. We have mostly been focused on fiber optic uh, connectivity. Uh, in fact, these facilities are connected to this network and that's how we provide services. Uh, we provide services to over 100 locations across the, uh, um, the whole county. And this is quite actually a very unique uh, endeavor if you look at nationwide. Nationwide, we haven't seen anything replicated like this. Mm -hmm. um, we have all the 16 school districts that are part of this uh, network. Uh, let me, next slide, please. Uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. All of your communication is, you said majority of it is fiber? But yes. Or we all have, of it? We have some point-to-point -point microwave systems to connect the very remote schools like Mulberry, Magnolia. Mm -hmm. They're very far out and uh, fiber 
has been cost prohibitive to get to those schools. Mm -hmm. um, we also ran into some problems in Winter Haven trying to get the fiber inside the reservation. Mm -hmm. And so we're still working on some of those for future, but for now it's, it's been a wireless system mm -hmm. to connect okay. these schools. Um, we have 20, uh, 12 major communities connected, 34 community anchor institutions or agencies. Uh, we have a formal JPA or a Joint Powers Authority, so there are 34 uh, member seat board of which you're part of. Marjo Mello for uh, the longest time provided her leadership uh, and was president two times uh, for, of this board during these last 20 years. So City of Broadway has been highly engaged in this project and we're really appreciative of that. About 120 sites uh, connected. Uh, we've put in about 100 miles of our own dark fiber connected through the whole valley. Uh, 80 miles provided by IID and then 60 miles that takes us all the way from Sealy east west down to Winter Haven, Winter Haven, California. So we've done a lot in the last um, 20 years. Um, by the way, that's the network uh, manager right there that operates this network. So Michael, thank you for being here. Um, on the wireless side, we've uh, had uh, wireless assets, in this case, Spectrum, uh, to provide services. And we knew at some point in time uh, that the network would be expanded into the wireless space to help us with uh, the needs of our member agencies. And that couldn't be more clear in this last pandemic. And I actually want to show you a very short video on uh, one of the, what, I, what it means when we talk about wireless connectivity and broadband. So next slide, please. Next slide, thank you. So these are just a couple of examples of some of the things we've been dealing with in the last couple of years, especially with the pandemic. So back in 2018, we decided to uh, put some resources together to build a, a wireless system to see what the capabilities were to really understand how to deploy the system. We've been deploying fiber networks for the longest time. A wireless network is a completely different uh, uh, system, you know, so we have to learn that. And so we've been really focused on uh, the needs of our agencies. A lot of the needs recently came with our school, school districts. We had uh, this pilot system. I'll tell you, we were having a hard time. You know, our teachers weren't ready for distance learning back in 2018. And uh, COVID pandemic hit March 2020, the stay-at-home order that accelerated everything. And so 
uh, for, we were actually pretty much giving these devices away and um, we had low turnout or low usage. Um, hit the pandemic, we saw the toilet paper run phenomenon where <laughs> schools were hoarding, literally hoarding devices because they wanted to be prepared and offer um, uh, support to their schools. We found our, our system skyrocketed 15 times the usage from pre previous to the pandemic to now. So what that told us is there was a lot of need. Uh, we found that uh, not only we had uh, low-income families that did not have adequate access, we found that uh, families that did have access did not have enough access or capacity. When you had five people, three kiddos, and mom and dad trying to work from home and using broadband, um, it just didn't work. So this pilot came in really handy. We started with a uh, proof of concept, uh, six uh, cell sites across Imperial County. Uh, USDA uh, loved the program and they actually supported us with funding uh, through the uh, uh, Rural uh, Community Facilities Grant. Uh, we were able to secure eight additional antennas and uh, we've expanded that system to 14 antennas. We ran out of capacity. Brawley was the first community that ran out of capacity. You have an antenna set up here in Brawley? We have two now. We've upgraded. So we, we started with one. That was the initial pilot. It was the first antenna. We've what, are the, what are the locations? The, lo the first location is at the Palmer Auditorium, in the, in the roof of the Palmer Auditorium, and the second one is at the IID Dogwood Tower. So like a mini cell phone tower there at the high school. Yeah. So we, we've been strategic about not having to build towers. Uh, that's something that we just don't, it's not in our skill set. And we, again, our, our, with the fiber system, we've learned to leverage resources as much as possible because we want to keep those law, the costs as low as possible. Uh, next slide, please. This is just to give you a sense. We do cover the major corridors uh, going uh, south to north, uh, so from Calexico all the way down up to Grace Smith Nyland, cover the slabs and all those areas. So there's a lot of need. And so we've been focused on that specific need. We're learning <clears throat> more about coverage gaps as we move along. Uh, the schools have been uh, very supportive of this project and in fact have um, put dedicated one-time resources to completely upgrade the network because um, even though we hope to get kids back into the homes, we understand that distance learning is here to stay. I mean, at least some components thereof. And so uh, the connectivity is gonna be very important. And you saw some examples of some IVC students, some single moms that uh, have a lot of needs out there. Next slide, please. This is just to capture some of the usage. Uh, the, first, the first era was before the uh, stay-at-home order. And so you saw, as in we're in pilot phase, we had very little usage. And now we're, you know, we, we've been growing. We haven't updated this. But we have over 4,500 4, devices in circulation and continuing to grow. Next slide, please. Um, what we're proposing is, and we've talked to uh, uh, Mr. Salcido about this, and we've been talking to our IVTA board, is uh, adding a third uh, cell site in the Del Rio facility. This is a joint use facility by the city of Brawley and uh, Imperial County Office of Education. Um, if you could see on the left side, this is currently the two antennas that we have, and you can kind of have a sense of the heat map or where the signal travels. Uh, we are using uh, low wattage systems, very low you know, in terms of power and energy. Uh, a third cell site, and we're really talking about capacity here. Uh, the, the, one of the biggest issues we're seeing is as, as students are engaging in uh, high, it require high speed broadband to access resources like Zoom and those, some of these things. So, so it's really important for us to expand the east side of town. That's an area that we know that we do, do need to uh, further enhance the support. This is what the system would do. Uh, this is a purposely built system for our agencies like the cities. Uh, this, is, this can be accessed by the cities, the county, by IID, by the schools. Um, internet is system is filtered so that you know kids aren't going to inappropriate locations. Uh, next slide, please. This is the Palmer Auditorium uh, system. And you can see, uh, just give you a sense of non-penetrating uh, uh, roof mounts. And so you can see the, that little small box at the top. That's, that's basically the antenna system that you put out there. Next slide. This is an example of a Calexico admin uh, facility. This is a place where we have a monopole. Uh, and this is what it would look like in Del Rio. Uh, if you replace, uh, what we're looking at is an existing light pole that is already there. And so we would strap the antenna, as you see on the top of that light pole, 
uh, around 60 to 70 feet up in the air as high as it could go. Uh, we've done we've done the um, all the analysis, the engineering on the pole, and everything has passed in spec. Uh, this would allow us to run all the fiber. We have fiber optic cable in Del Rio that would serve. So one of the things that we need for the system to work is have access to the dark fiber. Uh, there is no cost to the city of Raleigh. I mean, this is all part of um, IVTA, and uh, schools have basically, you know, basically uh, taken the brunt of the cost for the system upgrades. Next slide. So again, this is in, in general. These are just numbers of what we're looking at, but really increasing capacity. We know that our kiddos need it, our families are going to need it, um, our agencies are going to need it. Um, we, we we are looking at uh, making sure that we're responsive to the needs of the community especially in these hard times um, as, we're, as we're still dealing with, with the pandemic. I welcome any questions from the council or from uh, Mr. Salcido. Thank you, Luis, for that presentation. Um, I, I recall going to that, um, the installation or the, the ribbon cutting of that mm -hmm. antenna on Palmer. What, when was that? What date was that installed? That was April of 2018, I think, I believe. Mm -hmm. so, and uh, how much range did you get from that single installation on Palmer? Um, so for usable range, we use typically two to three miles. And that heat map, the uh, the blue, is that like the, the outside reach of the of the range? No, it's, uh, if we can go back to that RF map, uh, you could see, um, that's where you, uh, basically that's like a, um, how the antennas, the horizontal pattern of the antennas, and obviously the blue is is probably going to be your signal for uh, if you have a little mobile device like a MiFi, it'll work well within that area. As you start moving away from the antenna, then that system, the little MiFi unit, won't have access. So we basically do a home unit, which is a looks like a home router. It's a cylinder that plugs into the wall mm -hmm. and then connects to the system. Okay. So as long as you're in the yellow area, you should have good service. Um, green is better service. Uh, blue is even better service. OK. okay. Um, how does the how does a border link LTE, this is LTE? Yes. Absolutely. And how does it differ from, from like a, a cell phone LTE wireless service? It's purposely built for. You know, we, we basically design it. We don't, we're not. Um, you know, we're not designing this for mobility, so we don't have a need to put many antennas out there. You know, we try to minimize the number of antennas mm -hmm. we need. Um, it's fine-tuned, you know, for the home units that we have so that we can lower the power requirements. Um, and we are using, you know, uh, newer equipment. So this is uh, to really minimize power, to uh, make sure of the efficiencies of technology and also use what we call beam forming. So we have the best experience for our users at the lowest power and cost. And it's just for internal use, correct? You wouldn't be, you know, hosting any customers or anything like that? No, so. absolutely not. We, we uh, work with our okay. districts, and the districts, you know, they work directly with the families and, you know, who needs them. But, but the systems are similar, though. I mean, as far as, like, the commercial system and that particular system, I know that there isn't, like, uh, commercial users, right? But it's still... It's the same similar. function. Yeah, it's the same function. It's the same function. Yes. Absolutely. absolutely. I appreciate the presentation. I mean... We seen in Imperial County, you know, especially when I lived in San Diego, it seemed like we were always so far behind as far as technology goes and what we offer to our students and our community as a whole. So thank you for your work and your leadership on this matter. It's very important, especially for students from disadvantaged communities who don't have access to, uh, you know, who need this. And education so, is key for a better community as a whole. We need access to uh, good education. So. Absolutely. And, you know, we're working with our, you know, with our Mondo and team to just make sure are there needs or gaps we can fill for you. Yeah. I mean, th this system could be used to connect small locations like the airport and those sorts of places. I mean, this, this system has a lot of potential. Yeah, and I think uh, especially this pandemic, it was exposed, right, how Absolutely. these underserved communities were, like, at a great disadvantage. Absolutely. Um, no, so thank you for that. Appreciate Absolutely. that. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions? No, I can't think of any. Um, so you mentioned the airport. So eventually, it won't just be uh, public education or students that. It could be now. I mean, it's really about the needs. The system is ready to go. I mean, we already have two antennas in operation. Uh, this is about really in enhancing the east side, but it can be used. In fact, we actually, I think, I believe we did a pilot, Armando, with the with the senior, uh, the senior center. So. Um, We've already provided some units. Uh, we'd be glad to provide more 
to serve your needs. So it's essentially it's a, a proprietary router that has to be given to whoever needs to have to use the system. Absolutely. Right. That was what they were at the school. Okay. We also have, um, there's, so there are all kinds of units, or specialty units, or vehicle units as well. So these are units that sit on a vehicle, they use the 12 DC power, and mm -hmm. uh, we have buses connected, the schools are connecting their mm -hmm. buses as well to, uh, for safety, uh, being able to monitor the um, students on the, on the buses, cameras, whatever systems that they need. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great, any other questions? I have a comment. Uh, if I may, Mayor. Uh, again, Mr. Wong, I appreciate you coming down and explaining what's going on here with these uh, very important uh, Broad Lake program. I would like to say you had mentioned that uh, um, Ms. Margil was our representative, but now we have Amando Garobe. He's he's our representative on the IVTA board. Right. So uh, right up his alley as far as expertise. So it's it's a good, good addition for us. Just one. Mm -hmm. Very good. You're well represented. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mundle's everywhere now. <laughs> <laughs> when do you sleep, bro? <laughs> All right. We'll move, <laughs> move on to item three, consent agenda. Items are approved by one motion. Council members or members of the public may request consent items be considered separately at a time determined by the mayor. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Yeah. Item four, city yeah. manager report. Yeah. Well, my, my loan announcement was that it was going to be Bennett Hanley's birthday today, but uh, so that's <laughs> <laughs> stole that my thunder way. again, Your Honor. Um, uh, other than that, I, I will defer any comments till. Uh, Next meeting. Nothing to report. <laughs> Thank you. You guys just love making him blush. He, he, he calls me that because he's the janitor some of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so janitor sometimes. Yes, that's, that's true. true. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. The janitor. Okay, you want a janitor. Okay, moving on to item five: regular business. Five A is an update on City of Brawley declaration of local emergency as a result of COVID-19 pandemic. Your time matches your does my time match my face? <laughs> this is presented by Fire Chief Mike York, our candle lighter. There you go. <laughs> Excellent title, much better. Uh, good evening, Mr. Started. Mayor and members of the council, city staff, Mike York, Fire Chief. Uh, tonight for the uh, COVID-19 update, uh, it was required by our declaration of emergency. Uh, fairly brief, our numbers have kind of plateaued. If anybody is paying attention to the Pearl County website anymore, um, they do update it daily. Um, however, our numbers have not been changing very much in the last several weeks. Um, of note, um, if you do look on, if you've been paying close attention, you'll see the numbers of available hospital and regular hospital beds, ICU beds, and surge capacity. You'll see those numbers have reduced and the percentages have risen. And what that is is the hospitals moving back to their more normal uh, modes of operation so they don't have those surge capacity beds set aside, which is a good thing because we're not using them. Um, the number of ventilators on site are going down as those ventilators and portable ven ventilators and ad hoc ventilators are being returned back to their normal services and normal locations. Um, so there's been some question on that. Um, if you're paying attention to percentages of availability, it looks like um, we're trending back. That's not the case. It's just the, the number available is being reduced as these hospitals are moving back to normal operations. The Imperial County website is still maintaining their tab of the quote unquote tier metrics, even though we're outside of the tier system. There's been quite a bit of interest from our public and understanding, I think, as we've gone through 19 months of looking at positivity and case counts, it's uh, very much interesting to people. So, um, as I've reported many times over the last many months, uh, we look at case counts per 100,000 and our positivity rate. Currently, we're at 2.3 persons per 100,000. We're at 2.1% positivity rate. Um, these are some of the lowest numbers we've seen, um, which is obviously excellent. Um, there has been a change to the COVID-19 vaccination dashboard. The Imperial County specific one is not being updated uh, regularly. They're deferring back to the state dashboard. The state dashboard does not show individual or separation between first dose, second dose. It's just showing the total number of doses administered. Within our county, we are just shy of 200,000 doses administered. 
In the state of California, we are administered well over 20,000 doses, and we have 5,000 doses in standby. So our vaccination supply is incredibly robust. Everybody that is uh, trying to get one is available nowadays. Um, the only note on that is that um, as a matter of public health, I would, you know, from our point of view, from the public health point of view, and for anybody listening, if you are on a two-dose vaccine schedule, please do your best diligence to get your second dose. We're starting to see um, situations, uh, the case counts rise where people receive their first dose and fail to get their second dose for whatever reason. So it's very important that if it's a two-dose vaccine to get the second dose. Um, so as most declarations of emergency go, as any sort of major catastrophe or disaster, at the very beginning, we try to deal with the public health and public safety. And there's always the concern about economics. And as the timeline goes, we make that slide slides over. We still have very much a public health issue. We still have people that are contracting COVID. We're still recording deaths and people that are affected maybe for the rest of their lives from COVID. So we need to make sure that people are understanding that we're not completely out of the woods. However, across just about every segment, the focus now is moving more towards the economic recovery. And um, we'll be looking at how better to report to this body in the future as we move more away from the public health uh, concern. Um, and then I can report the very much clear as mud. Uh, OSHA guidelines. So Cal OSHA met on June 17th, and um, an executive order allowed their uh, ETS or their emergency temporary standards to take effect the same day. Um, so the important things we're looking at. Um, so fully vaccinated employees don't have to are not mandated to get testing if they start showing symptoms. Maybe something else, of course. Uh, fully vaccinated employees do not have to wear ma face masks in the workplace. They may do so if they still wish. They may not be discriminated against. And um, physical distancing and barrier requirements are being changed. So all of these policies are in a, in a state of flux. Um, I've spoken with uh, Shirley Vanillas, HR and our Human Resources and Risk Manager. And uh, in all of her spare time, she's working on updating our COVID prevention policy. Um, that is a joke. She has no spare time. Um, so uh, much like Armando, she doesn't sleep, thankfully, and we can get things done. If there's any other questions, I will do my best to answer those. Good information. Well, uh, while we have you, if there's no questions, uh, just a brief update on the two fires, uh, the one at Weiss and down south, if you have any latest um, information. The uh, fire that occurred last night on Rutherford in the area of Weist um, fell upon uh, some federal lands, some Department of Fish and Wildlife lands. Um, it was contained, and uh, crews were released early this morning. Uh, Brawley Fire Department directly responded to that location. Uh, it was managed by uh, Imperial County Fire Department personnel at the beginning. They turned it over to Chief Giannis of Calipat, and then he received some assistance from DFG personnel. Um, the fire that occurred south in the Calexico area, which was uh, near Farrell Road and the uh, New River Bottom, um, limited information. I did check in with Imperial County Fire Chiefs last night. It was at fourth alarm. Uh, it was wind driven, and they were requesting bad. strike teams out of San Diego. I don't know if they uh, received those, uh, but they did get some uh, assistance, and they had it under control, but it looks like it's going to be a multi-day event. Currently, we have no staff. We do not have any personnel assigned to, uh, down south. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Thank you Chief. <clears throat> Great job today, by the way. Mm -hmm. on, on your presentation and the light. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Candle lighting. <laughs> you had to do it three times. I know, right? Yeah, you know? Hey, but that's good, right? I mean, blowing yeah. it out. Who's trying? It works. Yeah, we call it a recall. That's actually the terminology now. <laughs> that's a Georgism right there. Yeah, yeah I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're learning. Like a Georgism. Yeah. Yeah. Georgism. That doesn't sound right. Okay. <laughs> Item 5B, discussion and potential action to approve a budget adjustment and contract services agreement with West Coast Arborist Incorporated in the amount of $20,790 for citywide tree maintenance services and authorize the city manager to execute the contract. This will be presented by city manager Tyler Salcido. Backup is on pages 244 to 246. 
Thank you, Mayor. Uh, before you this evening is a tree maintenance service agreement with uh, West Coast Arborist for a one year term of 20790 and also an option to renew in one year uh, increments. Uh, the first year provides services for approximately uh, about 200 trees. Uh, in our audience today, uh, Isaac, if you can come up, please. Isaac Garza, uh, area manager for West Coast Arborist. Um, the city maintains about approximately 1,500 trees uh, throughout the city, which are located in our parks, the plaza, multiple public facilities, our landscape and lighting districts. District, we only have one of those, and community uh, facility uh, districts. Uh, citywide tree trimming is uh, currently completed by Parks and Rec Department. However, due to limited human resources and the need for specialized equipment and expertise, the, uh, the city is recommending a, per, a professional contract service with the WCA to support the existing operations. Uh, I'll let uh, Mr. Garza tell you a little about, about WCA. Um, one last thing to note before I turn it over uh, for uh, questions for Isaac. Uh, in the municipal code, the city's municipal code, there is a, provides an alternative to the traditional request for a proposal process whereby the recent complete, competitively pr procured contract of another m municipality is relied upon the city uh, to produce services, supplies, materials, equipment, etc. cetera. Uh, this pre uh, procurement method is commonly referred to as a piggy pack pr procurement. That's uh, when noted that is why we're here before you and then not officially through an RFP process. Uh, Isaac. Thank you, Mr. Salcedo. My name is Isaac Garza, uh, area manager for West Coast Arborist. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, council members and staff. Um, I've been a certified arborist for about 15 years. Uh, I've been approximately two and a half years with West Coast Arborist. We are a professional tree maintenance company, trees only. We don't do landscaping as far as our professional um, business is trees. We know we plant them, we remove them. We, um, we, we do emergency response for municipalities. Currently, West Coast Arborist, Arborist services over 330 municipalities in California and Arizona. Um, I, my, the office I run in the area I run is in an Indio, um, roughly 45 to an hour away. Um, I'm here to answer any questions you guys might have. If, uh, if I may continue, thank you, Isaac. Uh, this would be, uh, before you, there's a, uh, it would be a budget adjustment. Uh, as you know, the reserve said uh, in our proposed budget, well, the final adopted budget was about 24331 If this is approved, uh, that would reduce that by that amount down to about $3,500. Um, but I do think it's a much needed service, and it's, uh, you know, a trial for both parties. Uh, and I think the benefits is going to uh, be uh, very visible. Yeah. And I, I, I will mention, I uh, met Isaac previously, obviously, and so I did uh, show him around the city a little bit, and uh, we, we saw it, some of the challenges we have in maintaining our trees and the challenges we'd had in, like, the downtown area and our plaza area where we've had fallen trees on vehicles and that sort of thing. So, um, I, I, you know, with respect to the dollar amount, I think what they're offering is uh, incredible service. You know, not to say that our staff can't do some work, but maintaining the tree levels here is, is very challenging. You know, we, we are challenged enough with the landscaping, um, and then, you know, really we're more reactionary when we have a fallen tree, lands on a vehicle, and we have an insurance claim, those sorts of things. So they, they offer something different, and I appreciate that. But thank you very much for bringing this back to us. I know we talked, and uh, I do appreciate you, um, you know, offering and consider to help us here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your consideration. Well, Sounds good. All right. Any other questions? Uh, there, there is potentially some savings where we have to rent equipment when we do trim the trees in addition, but I don't have an exact figure, but yeah. that will help offset some of these costs. My, my assumption is with the contract, um, if we have um, specific projects that we might identify, that would be on a cost mm -hmm. basis. That would be the next step. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. And, and uh, piggyback provide, does provide uh, line items. It's mm -hmm. pretty pretty inclusive. It has. It's basically a... Um, off, we offer any services you guys might need, um, even on a crew rental type basis. Um, we've, we've helped cities with special projects all the time. Um, it wouldn't be any different for the city of Raleigh, obviously. Uh, we do have, you know, elevator booms, um, you know, 100-foot towers, cranes, loaders, things of that nature um, to respond to any kind of situation you guys might have. Yeah, no, um, yeah typically I'm, I'm not a fan of outsour outsourcing, but... I did see the need. We I remember your presentation as we walked the, the Plaza Park. Is it, 
Um, and yeah, we don't want to be reactionary. We, and so, you know, we hope to get that assessment done as quickly as possible and, and get to it. So we appreciate your services. Definitely, definitely. And like I was telling Tyler, uh, one of your biggest assets is your trees. Uh, Absolutely. You know, it's the only thing that once you plant, it actually increases in value. And understanding the value of a tree to our neighborhood and, and your other improvements that's going on, it's, it's really a, it's just a big piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Mrs. Yes. Schoonover will be appreciative. Yeah, no doubt, right? But it's, we're chipping away at those things because even, you know, separate topic, but, you know, I did have an item put on there with respect to debris challenges and things like that. So we are addressing these things. It's just it takes time. And then, you know, with, with COVID and everything else, and it's now that we're starting to get out of that a little bit, you know, we're able to address these things. And so finding it's the, just, the different avenues right. and ways to do it. It's, 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 not, it's not as easy as... We, we hope to be an extension of the yeah. city, not not to replace anybody or take anybody's spot, right. but be a tool yeah. in the arsenal that you guys have and be able to to be more efficient. And, and, and obviously, I'm in a prior life, I was uh, I was with the municipality as a parks and landscape inspector. And I know the challenges of having not only the staff available, the equipment, the money, but, um, you know, also having the knowledge as far as, um, you know, hazard mitigation when you're having an issue. You don't know what's wrong until something happens happened so right. having a set of eyes that can actually help you out in the field and and identify things be before they become problems certainly is huge so and, um, and the way we've reacted it's been like we're reactionary and then we have our insurance provider come down and tell us what to remove you know and it's like we don't want to get to that point we've done it before that's you know, a good so, point uh, jpia yeah. is yeah. is a fan of this type of program as right. well that's our yeah. yeah so yeah and beyond that you know we can offer assistance with uh maybe your codes and and with your, you know, your overall plan as far as having an urban forest, um, that's something we can always provide not, uh, input with when you guys are, are writing out, um, you know, programs and, and, and codes for your city. So, mm -hmm. okay. great, thanks. Thank you. Do we have a motion to approve the budget adjustment and contract? Motion to approve. I'll second the motion. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Isaac. Welcome to the city. Item 5C, discussion and potential action to approve resolution number 2021 resolution of the City Council of the City of Brawley, California, appointing three members to the Brawley Public Library Board of Trustees with term ending June 30th, 2024. Back this on pages 247 to 251. The uh, applicants are existing board members Judy Grant, Dixie Smith, and Diana Lohr. And there were no other applicants, Alma? No. Okay. So I will. Uh, I'll make a motion to reappoint. Okay. Uh, is there I'll a second? second? It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Congratulations, ladies. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, item 5D, discussion and potential action to approve resolution number 2021 resolution of the City Council of the City of Brawley, California, appointing two members to the Brawley Planning Commission with term ending June 30th, 2025. The backup is on pages 252 through 257. The applicants are John Grass, John Lane. This, those two, and there was three. And Jay Boyle. Oh, Jay Goyle. Mm -hmm. Okay, there it is. Mm -hmm. Missed that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jay Goyle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, reading the applications. My recommendation is to appoint John Lane and John Grass. Does anyone else have an opinion or recommendation? Uh, Mr. Goyle is looking for reappointment to the position. He does have extensive real estate experience and development experience. I think that could be useful. So yeah. um, I would still be in favor of having him there. Okay. Maybe we can yeah. introduce a, another member. Yeah, I also serve with uh, Mr. Goyle, and he is actually he's a he's an asset to the planning commission. His experience and uh, knowledge is extremely valuable to that to that board, and you know. We had our fights on there, but <laughs> but I have to give him credit. He's, he's extremely knowledgeable and um, his background as well uh, as an engineer and as a prior uh, uh, planning director. 
I believe it was a planning director. Um, it serves a great purpose. There's an asset to the to that board. Okay. Um, so the second. M Mr. Lane, excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Mr. John Lane does have previous uh, planning uh, commission experience mm -hmm. as well. So just a okay. item of note. So Jay Goyle, John Lane. Mm -hmm. We have a motion for those two. Any other? Okay. Who's the third one? Is uh, Mr. Grass, John Grass? Mr. Mayor, I think I can certainly, I think they're, again, actually we had three great candidates, yeah. so it's nice to see. And um, and I just recently uh, actually met, I'm not going to say no, uh, Mr. Grass, but again, um, if, you know, we, we go ahead and move forward with the resolution with the slate you just mentioned, um, I would certainly encourage Mr. Grass to either keep his application or consider some of the other positions as they become available, which they often do, it seems, as we go through the process. So I just want to make that comment. Okay. Are any of the members, the applicants here, Mr. Mayor? No. No? No. Okay. okay, so that's late. Jay Goyle, John Lane, do I have a motion to approve those two? I'll make a motion to approve the item, those two names. I will second. It's been uh, moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? All right. Congratulations, Mr. Goyal and Mr. Lane. And that is to uh, to fill the seat that was left by Mr. Gene Bombera yeah. upon his passing. death. Yes. Uh, he served till the end of his life, so that's pretty amazing. Moving on to item 5E, make sure I'm on the right page here. Discussion and potential action to approve resolution number 2021 resolution of the City Council of the City of Brawley, California, appointing two members to the Imperial Valley Housing Authority Board with term ending June 30th, 2025. Backup is on pages 258 through 262. And our applicants are Mary Miller, Robert Palacio, and they're both looking for reappointment. Do I have a motion to approve? Make a motion to approve uh, the reappointment of both applicants. Second. And moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? Congratulations, Ms. Miller and Mr. Palacio. Mr. Mayor, can I, can I, as general counsel for the Housing Authority, I can tell you that Mr. Palacio or, or Mrs. Miller alter, almost all, every year alternate as president of the board. So they, they, they really are the leaders of that board. Very important. Great. Thank you. It's good to have Brawley representation. Okay. Okay, item 5F. I'm sorry. Discussion, possible direction regarding unhoused or unauthorized camping and debris challenges. This is led by Tyler Salcido. Um, as Council Member uh, Nava had alluded to earlier, uh, he had requested that we uh, put these very important issues uh, on the table here for discussion and potentially maybe for staff, some staff direction. Um, we could uh, we can go one or two ways here. We can have um, Councilman Nava if you want to open with any comments, or we can. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So over the past um, several months, uh, we've had a number of complaints with respect to uh, homeless vagrants, just a lot of different uh, debris throughout the city. And, you know, it's probably um, partly due to the fact that, you know, COVID has impacted our community and the communities across the country. But, you know, it's also been challenging for police because they, they can't necessarily or they don't necessarily arrest and hold at the jail, right? And so some of these people belong in jail, you know, that's just a matter of fact, right? And so um, I've encountered multiple locations throughout our community, and I'm sure you've seen them, um, where we're having uh, encampments and we're having people just loiter, and because we do have um, some vacant buildings, they're they're uh, they're setting up in these locations. And one could be, uh, for example, 
the old Cook's Market building, which is near Ace Hardware. That's been an encampment now, and you know they've made themselves very comfortable there. And so those are the types of things that we need to address. But I think, you know, obviously we need to work with the property owners. I think that's going to be very important. But um, we also just need to address the cleanup. It's become uh, not just an eyesore, but a health hazard for, for everybody. Um, you know, down G Street, down, away from my office too, uh, you know, a number of, of um, you know, there are people hanging out. Some are homeless and some are just, you know, whether they're doing drugs, and I've seen them do that, um, but it's, it's just become problematic. Mm -hmm. I know we had a recent instance where we had um, near the DMV uh, location where we had, uh, and I, I visited the property, took some pictures, I spoke with our city manager, and I know it had been worked on by our city attorney and our city manager, but you know, it, it took some time to address, but we were successful in removing that. And we've also had to um, address things on private property. That was also on private property, that particular issue. But it's just a matter of um, driving the community. I know we've all driven past multiple locations. Ms. Schoonover, she's mentioned um, we've had some problems. And I know that that is um, certainly something that we are aware of. But we just need to take a greater focus on it now. Um, you know, our, our meetings have opened up again. Um, you know, our community starting to open up again. More recently, we've opened some facilities again. So it's starting to, to shift a little bit. And it's making it uh, a little bit easier for us to go out and engage. Um, so that's just a long-winded introduction of why I, I wanted to have this item on here. I've received a number of complaints um, uh, via text, phone call, et cetera. And we've had people come here. Uh, to our city council chambers as well. So it's just something that I think is a very important. Um, just our community as a whole is just really important, right? And and not to mention just the fact that there's a lot of like uh, deferred maintenance and, uh, on commercial buildings, on residential buildings, on apartment buildings and things like that. People are just not cleaning their properties up, you know? Um, you know, I take pride in my house and I take pride in my office. I want them to be clean. I want the grass to be green. I want, you know, people to be welcome, you know, and not everybody feels that way. So it's just a thing that we need to address, whether it's through through a legal process or just the messaging. Maybe there's a, there's a campaign that we can take on. I think if there's just enough information out there, a uh, little public pressure, if you will, maybe in, in working with the Chamber of Commerce and maybe working with, with other agencies here, just to spread the word that, hey, it's, it's important to, to clean our properties up, to get things out. And, um, you know, with respect to, to homelessness and vagrancy, you know, that's just something we have to address. It's not a it's not a popular topic. It's not mm -hmm. something we all like to talk about, but it's just something that's impacting our community. I think more than I have seen in the past. So anyway, that's my long-winded um, soliloquy, if you will. But it's just I think it's Im very important that we address it. Co Councilmember, no, I, I know we talked about maybe about six months ago. We met with uh, El Centro yes. on on some other topics. I think you know having to do with. Um, um, where, where, where actually this came up, where, where it wasn't the um, main topic, but I think um, there are some ideas and maybe some momentum um, that's been created down there, um, which I know for some members of the public having another committee or commission, you know, sometimes you might get an eye roll, but there's some that are, you know, as we just discussed and just voted yeah. in and are reappointed, um, that are obviously very essential and very important to a community. This being that topic, right. um, I, I, because there's no one answer, right? There's not a law enforcement solution. There's not just a legal solution, right. humanitarian solution. There's, a, you know, secular, non-secular, go right down the list, right? Um, what if we approach this and, and put that, you know, kind of multidiscipline or segmented, you know, committee together, if nothing else, to um, get some momentum behind one or two key, you know, right. initiatives. And even, that, that even introducing, like, our, our, yeah. our uh, partners in trash collection, like Republic Services. Exactly. You know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. I mean, our, I mean, it all ties together, yeah. right? I mean, um, in, in pride in our community and in, in, in what, what often gets overshadowed are many, many of the citizens that do take care of their business and their right. yards. And, and mm -hmm. so really it's, it, it goes back to let's, let's put all those folks in the right, you know, maybe it's a one-time public engagement. I mean, it's a, you know, three phase, you know, but something realistic where we can get, because I know there's concerned citizens that are more than willing to step forward uh, with ideas, time, effort, energy, resources, 
pull that together with some of the solutions that have worked in some of the other cities. Um, I'm spending some time right now this time of year in San Diego, and I'm going to tell you I see the same things though, yeah, um, going right on the coast, right at the beach, right in San Diego, yeah. right in, you know, uh, everywhere you go. Does it mean there aren't good ideas elsewhere that we, we, can, we can employ here? But I think it just comes down to picking one or two very key initiatives, getting behind it, um, and maybe it doesn't solve the root cause, um, but it certainly can make this, you know, our community a better place. So. I'm concerned a little bit, uh, Mr. Mayor, Your Honor. Uh, I'm concerned a little bit about, um, the, it seems that the homeless are getting a little more bolder. I've had complaints from the west side businesses that they destroy their electrical systems, their, their lighting, their, their, their water systems, et cetera, that, that they move through. And not, every, not every one of the homeless does that, but there are a group that, that want to charge their phones, so they unplug their electrical systems, you know, for watering, et cetera. And they also go through and they, they tear up different things within those, those buildings, their landscaping, et, et cetera. And so I think we've got to get more proactive about that and, and maybe enforcing the law a little bit more. I don't think it's the, the police officer on patrol that, that's at fault. I think it's just the fact that they, they won't jail them, they won't do anything. So all they can really do is kind of warn them off, kind of move them for a few days, and they come back. And so um, I think there's got to be some steps that we can take, I think, to improve that situation. And I think as far as the debris and stuff, I think we need a cleanup campaign, et cetera. But I'm not sure how to approach that because sometimes you can't just go in and bulldoze all their homeless camp down and, and do that. But at least we can start toward that, that type of action. And maybe that's what we have to do in the long run. Um, but I, I think that we, that I'm not sure there's any real perfect solution to all of that, but I do think we need to take some proactive steps to try to improve the situation. I, you know, I, I just thinking out loud, um, I was driving around there and I saw some of the encampments in the, in the alleys. I saw that, you know, they're lacking maintenance and whatnot. And I also saw it's kind of like a, something we don't need anymore. And I'm just curious how we can go about shutting those down, transferring property back to the homeowners, um, just eliminating some of the costs for the city. Uh, the maintenance that we provide on those is just ongoing and ongoing issue. We just kind of want to see some of the stuff that we can get rid of and eliminate some of the issues that we're having and the homeless seem to be thriving in those areas, especially in the east side of town. I went into that area of uh, G Street, uh, about, I uh, can't think of the block, uh, but over where the car wash area is at. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah full cameras, you can't drive yeah. through it anymore. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I had a very direct conversation with a lot of those guys. Here. So <laughs> yeah, it's like, can you imagine? I can imagine? And so my, my question is just like some of these areas can be eliminated. Just like, you know, if we can close those alleys down, hand, hand those properties back over, you know, split them up and hand them over to the property owners there in that area. I just don't see the need for them anymore. I don't know what they were in the past. I'm sure it was for trash and, you know, some other services. But if in any places we can get away, do away with that and also, you know, it gets rid of that city liability where we have to provide maintenance for that. So. Just a thought. I don't know. Brainstorming out loud as I think I, about it. I, I think, though, that uh, Council Member Wharton is on to something there. I mean, I, I brought the topic so we can sort of brainstorm here because it's not one solution, right? It's right. just it's, it's, it's a lot of different things. Yeah. But, but maybe, um, you know, and I, I, I'm the same way. I'm like, eh, maybe, you know, convening a group is not the best, but it might be the, the right solution. You know, you get more ideas and more people to think through it, and then you're going to get more support for people to, to market the idea and just really kind of support that effort. I think, you know, it, it, it would be a, a good cause to, to, to push forward, you know, and I've used some really explicit nasty terms to describe the city sometimes, and I won't <laughs> use them today, but um, it just needs to be cleaned up. I mean, Brawley needs a cleanup. We really need that. We really do. And it, it, it takes everybody's effort from residents, property owners, commercial property owners, residential property owners. It's like mow your lawns, yeah. you know? Like just as simple as that. Clean up your buildings. Like clean the place up. It's just, it's, it's inviting negativity, if you will. You know what I mean? It's like that's what we need to get away from. So anyway, I, I, I just wanted to make sure that I brought this item up because we can continue to drive around town and see the problem, but if we're not addressing it or trying to, then um, it's not going to correct itself. Mm -hmm. If there isn't a concerted effort by us and other agencies, it's going to be the same way. We know that, and it's, but now that we're a little bit clear from COVID, I think it makes it easier. So 
I, I wanted to bring it up. I think it's important. It might take law enforcement. It might take, uh, again, the humanitarian. It might take some nonprofits. It may take, you know, Republic Services. It may take us. It may take marketing, the effort. It may take just acknowledgement of the fact that we've got a problem. And hey, at the very least, clean up your building. You know what I mean? Yeah. I clean up mine. It's like I clean up my house. I clean up my building. I, I take care of it. In fact, I clean up city property just to make it better. Your you know building's know I mean? so pretty, bro. I like I, it. I appreciate it's it. fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. I love it. But it's it's the same effort that other people put into it. It's not just me. There's others that really do care about their own properties, and they just want it to, to look better. You know, and we've had complaints about it, so let's just... Uh, see what we can pull together. So you're proposing like a homeless task force? Abroad. I wouldn't say homeless. I wouldn't even say that. I would, I, let's not, th that word too often is confused with like, look, not everybody's just homeless. There yeah. are some vagrants out there, man, yeah, yeah. some drug addicts, there are some criminals out there. Let's be honest about that too. It's not just homeless. It's like, it's a mix of all these things. It's like, there's just some dirty people out there. You know what I mean? It's like, that's the truth. And people will get upset when I, when I speak that way, but that's the truth. It's like, you know, oh, well, they're homeless or it's a mental problem. All right, maybe some, but not everybody. You know what I mean? It's like there are some just some bad folks out there, you know, and it's like we need to clean that up. So I wouldn't necessarily call it homeless. I would just say it's a, it's a cleanup task force, and that involves all kinds of stuff. So I don't know. That's just my thought. I'll get attacked by somebody, I'm sure. Like, I'm sure. <laughs> You're anti-homeless. <laughs> no, exactly. Right? That's what they'll say. But it's like, no, I'm anti, like, looking like crap all the time. You know what I mean? It's like, Just so maybe there's some potential direction um, um, from this. If we can you know, just start looking over, my suggestion would be maybe to reach out to um, El Centro, the group we met with, I think including their mayor at the time. And I, and, 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 uh, and I reached out to something him, like that. Yeah. And I reached out to him more recently. Um, I reached out to, to the city manager, and I had to follow up on it. So that's a little bit on me. But um, with respect to their code enforcement officer, I wanted to just to see like what they're doing. Right, and so maybe that's another angle that we can. But let's just you know get started on something. And I think Chief has some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chief, and then any if there's any other public comments. Sure, there is. People want to make. And nobody attack me, please, not today. Yes. <laughs> or suggestions. Yeah. I mean, uh, yes. The only thing I, I would like to add is what we are doing from the police perspective. I, I know everybody's frustrated. I'm frustrated yeah. because uh, certain ways our hands are tied, yeah. uh, you know, and we got to abide by the law. There's certain things we can or cannot do, uh, but I think we are making effort. Uh, I don't know if you noticed lately. There's, yeah. I, I know there's some hidden areas in our city where we do have camps still, but if you look at our main street, uh, I think the last one was on Kiss Kissy Park, and we just yeah. got rid of that uh, yeah. last this week actually yeah. last week. Sorry. Uh, and so, I thank so you we for are those being things. proactive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, as far as uh, community cleanup, uh, although it's not a police matter, we have chosen to get involved because we know it's important. If our city looks bad, I think people tend to act bad. I think that's just yeah. my approach. Yeah. Uh, so we are getting involved. We did a community cleanup on the 26th. It was just not cleanup, but it was graffiti as well. Yeah. We're uh, scheduling another one for September. Uh, we're also working with Spread the Love. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Jessica Solodio and her people. Uh, we're actually contacting uh, homeless uh, to give them that humanitarian, uh, you know, uh, part of what we need to do. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll cite, for example, last Thursday, we contacted 26. Uh, you know, in the past, we haven't really been doing this. And even now that we're doing it, we're really stretching our, our officers uh, to you know, to the best of our ability. That's that's a reality. We are short staff, but we're willing to go the extra mile. We are doing it. So we're going out there with uh, Spread the Love, and we're trying to make contact and offering services that in the past uh, we were not participating in, uh, in, in that. We're also working with social services and any other uh, nonprofit that, we'll, uh, that we can work with. You know, uh, that's just uh, the way I believe that we need to address this. It's, got, it's a community uh, yeah, it's a, it's event a community. here. No, and I thank you, Chief. I know that you are working hard in that, and, and uh, I appreciate that very much. In fact, you know, uh, even when I've, I've had complaints and it's been reported, it's been addressed very rapidly. So I do appreciate the effort and the work that you're doing. But you're right. It, it is, it's a greater problem, right? It's not just the police effort. It's a greater problem, and I think we can come together and I mean we've got enough smart people to come up with something right and there's enough people out there to help so let's just yes and that's why we decided yeah. to uh, you know organize these yeah. cleanups because I think they're you're right you know something that I have noticed here in our city uh, there's a lot of people willing to help we yeah. just got to funnel that energy in the right way so what we're yeah. doing is we're starting with the cleanups and hopefully in the near future we can uh, you know come up with something else we got to be creative I think yeah. these things are not going to fix by themselves we got to give creative we got to participate 
uh, you know, something uh, even on Thursday we mentioned at the business and managers meeting, we talked about some of these uh, business fronts that are just not the way it should be. Right. So they're not really clean. So we're right. hoping uh, to help out, you know, to the best of our ability with the homeless. But then again, there is limitations as to what we can and cannot do. So. And, Thank you. Gotcha. and if I may add, Chief alluded to our meeting last Thursday that uh, Chief, <laughs> Chief yes. Duran had ramrodded, and, and it was, in my opinion, uh, the mayor was there as well. Uh, very, a very good meeting. We we did get some valuable feedback on some things that uh, well, me as city manager didn't really consider. But that's the thing. We we need ideas and. And there's one or two items in particular that I was interested in that we're researching and, and see the potential on that. So uh, while, uh, uh, as, as uh, Councilmember Nava mentioned, it's never fast enough, right? And I think I made that comment at the meeting. It's never fast enough, but we are doing some things. Uh, we're trying to think outside the box uh, on what can be done and not just the same old, same old. With that, I'll segue over to the city attorney to tell uh, the, the, uh, give us an update briefly on, on another when it uh, relates to the, the property owners and, and some of those uh, properties that are, are less than desirable. So um, I'm on the League of Cities Appellate Advocacy Committee, and one of the things that it's, it's from all, all, all the whole state, and all the city attorneys across the state say this is the biggest problem we have, and there's some very unfortunate court cases that really make it tough to deal with. But one thing that's unique in Imperial County, though, is, is the amount of abandoned residences that we have. It's not something you see in San Diego. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, a property's too valuable to abandon there. But it happens here all the time. So we spoke to Oscar and uh, Tyler and I said, Oscar, you must have some of these that are, that are a problem. You give them notices and nothing happens. Said, yeah, I got a whole bunch. I said, well, give them to me. Um, because the state law, health and safety code, allows me to go to court and appoint, have a receiver appointed. I've done that a few times for the city mm -hmm. of Raleigh mm -hmm. on some really bad. I remember uh, court. Yeah. King was the first thing I was asked yeah. to do when I was brought on here. Across um, from uh, Whitter Park, uh, or Missouri. Missouri. Missouri Park. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. the one on the corner. And, no, the know, one within one a couple over. months, I had the house sold. Yeah, and, I remember and, that was quick. So anyway, Oscar last week gave me a list of <laughs> that long of houses. So we're just going to start petitioning the court to have receivers appointed, uh, it, it, it costs very little. Uh, my, the, the attorney's fees going in are a little bit. We don't pay a filing fee like private parties do, but, but it costs very little and the results can be staggering. And what does occur, I'm sure Chief will tell you, if a house is abandoned, no matter what you do, it board it up, doesn't matter, people break in and oh, yeah. camp out there. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, and it just makes it very attractive. So Oscar's on board. He gave me a whole list of them, and we're going to start immediately on it. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Another item that I would like to bring to the council is we, we're proposing to work on two additional ordinances. One uh, would address storing uh, property in public spaces, which is kind of like what we see out there. People leave all their property, and that would allow uh, the police department to remove uh you know, said property. Uh, the other is a scavenging ordinance. That way, people cannot be digging in the dumpsters or in yes. your. And, and I think that's what happens. Somebody will leave a, or deposit a big item, then they grab it and they take it away. You know, mm -hmm. so that would make it uh, in a way illegal to do so. Hmm. Uh, I've seen it work in other cities, uh, and I'm hoping that they will work in ours as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as well as strengthening the camping ordinance too. Yeah, We're working yes. on that. So. Oh, oh, oh yes, by. Yes, we have been uh, enforcing the camping ordinance as well, and okay. that's how we were able to uh, remove the people from the park. recall we passed that ordinance explaining that the owners are responsible for the sidewalk. So the yeah. problem over by the DMV, which had been going on for a year, year? Uh, when that ordinance passed, I called them up and said, what are you doing? That? You need to clean that up. In fact, they called us. Yeah. They called us, and they were mad that we hadn't cleaned, the city hadn't cleaned it up. Yeah. So that's your responsibility. Take yeah. care of it. Yeah. And they did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they did, but they had also allowed that person to set up shop there. Yeah. And once you do that, it's yeah. like, yeah. you know, it's hard. you're inviting. I talk with that gentleman, and it was really didn't make any sense. But. Yeah. I think there's a comment, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Chief, you can probably stay there. Huh? Yeah. Thank That's you, fine. Chief. <laughs> Anybody, anyone with public comment, please come up. Come up to the mic, please. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. We want to hear from you, that's all. Yes. If we got to be up here, right? We gotta, yeah, yeah. Well, I've got several pieces of property on Main Street. Several of them are right there on the 100 block. Uh -huh. We try to keep that cleaned up, and you can have it cleaned up, 
You can have it all cleaned up on Thursday. It's fine on Friday. You come back Monday morning. There are people that are underneath a ficus tree on yeah, the corner yeah. building. They have issue. all their crap in there. Yeah. They've gone around there at 171 Main Street. They've got their stuff in there. And it's just a mess. And it's not because we're not trying right. to keep it cleaned up. I understand that. Yeah. You know, and so if you start coming after the owners all the time, you're going to run into a problem because the owners a lot of times are doing already as much as they already can. But I'm not going to go out there and challenge some of these people. Right, I mean, right, right. Most of them are a lot bigger than what I am. What, what we're talking about, though, too, is like abandoned, the uh, abandoned. buildings. Because yeah. I, I'm, I'm in agreement with you. I've cleaned up my own property, and I've done, honestly, hard work out there. And because it's cleaned, they, they find it as a nice dumping site. It's like then there's mattresses and couches out there the next day, and it's like, come on. And how many times has that occurred to me in the past, like, three months, mm -hmm. you know? I came so in like, one Saturday. There have been some people who went behind 171 Main Street. Uh, they went to the back, turned on one of the hoses. They'd done their laundry, and it was oh, yeah. all on the chain link. Yeah. Yep, that happens all and the time. And I thought, well, gee, that's kind of special. Hey, I was in my <laughs> office. The only time this has happened. Just, just, but just keep on I was in my office. My, my property's gated. I had my gate open. Mm -hmm. They walked onto the property. And I'm watching my cameras, and I'm with a client, and I'm watching this guy, or this gal at that time, and she goes out there, she starts showering, and she's, like, putting her clothes out there. I have a table in the back. I thought she was going to join the team and start selling real estate there because <laughs> she was already, like, sitting in a chair and putting her stuff out, already arranging her stuff. I'm like, you got to get out of here. What are you doing? Okay, so that happened. And then later in the day, another guy comes in, same sort of setup. And I'm like, you know, I know it's getting warmer, so they're looking for maybe shelter. They're looking for water. I've never had people come on the property like that because it's a walk from where the alleyway's at to get to my building, and it's gated. So yeah, I understand that there's a frustration there for sure. And you know, and you know, I'm not necessarily thrilled about going and confronting people, but I did it, and I wasn't pleasant about it. And so they leave, but. Why should we have to do that, you know? So, no, I hear you. I appreciate the comment. <laughs> it's real. My landlord over here, where my wife and I have our business, has uh, lost 20,000 gallons of water. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He has faucets out there we yeah. use to clean up. That's yeah. what I was talking lock them up. Yeah. 20,000 gallons yeah. of water. Yeah. If you don't have, like, a lock key, then, you know, it's like, yeah. yeah. They'll uh -huh. break, too. They'll yeah. break the pipe. Out. Yeah. Okay. One more, go one more public comment. I know we could talk about this forever. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can. Yeah, this. I commend you for having a nice open discussion about this uh, vexing problem. Um, first thing I'd like to say is this trash problem that we're having, we need to go to the root cause of it. One thing that would be really helpful is to have a transfer station for trash here in town where people can go and dump it because people aren't. Well, it, it, you can call Republic and they can come get your rotten mattress and take it away. People don't. Or they load it up in a truck and then they just take it out and dump it on a field someplace. Uh, over in Coachella, I have an interest in a farm there and on Avenue 50. It's a good idea. I like it. And every, at that farm, every night, Every morning we wake up and we've got eight or ten dumps on the county yeah. road. Uh -huh. And we got property and vegetables yeah. and stuff right there, and it's a food safety issue yeah. for us. They
he'll help those people that are being in vagrants and being a problem to make other decisions about better, easier places to come. Um, when I first got, when I first came into uh, contact with Spread the Love, they offered one service, bus tickets out of town, and now it's turned into, hey, come over here, and we'll give you all this stuff, and we'll give it to you today, and you can come back next week, and we'll give you more stuff. And so it just works the same way as the cats used to work at my house. My wife fed the cat out the back, out the back door. We had bites every night at 1 o'clock in the morning. So we just got to put this stuff away. We can't have trash for them to convert. I, I, think, that's, I think that's really the two main things that we can do. Uh, I, really, I, I really enjoyed the, the public meeting we had last Thursday, uh, thanks to the chief and all of his uh, efforts going into that, uh, we can make this place a better place. We, all of this falls under make your own path. All of, the, all of these things are start with people taking care of their own place, having pride in place, right? Pride of place. It's like, you know, people who come cut a tree down and leave the top 10 feet. They don't cut it down. They don't fix the stump. They don't plant a new tree. That's how we wind up with that. With, with a town that just looks like uh, something uh, something out of a movie you've seen somewhere in Australia, right? Anyway, looking for a, looking for a you know, Mad Max, right? We don't need that. We're better than that. We have the most abundant water, the cheapest water, and we can have a beautiful place. Here. But we just have to make our own bed first. I've addressed, I've addressed, I've addressed, I've addressed, I've addressed, I'm not embarrassed <laughs> to say it, but I, I've had some very, very hard conversations with a lot of people in town where I'm visiting them and I hate to say it in public, but I'm not making them welcome, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, there, there's just one particular case down the street from me, I'm showing a property and there's a guy there. See him selling drugs the other day. So he's still there. He's there now with his girlfriend. And now he's got like a condo that he's made out of boxes, you know, and he's like living in it. And it's like, come on. I mean, it's got trash. It's got all these other things out there. It just becomes an addition of other stuff. You know what I mean? It's just like at some point, we just have to say, I mean, that's enough. You know, it's just a collection of just. I'll go on all night. I would like to add briefly, since it bears to. On this discussion, that's been quite a while. Yes, we're we're aware and we're working on it. Thank you. Um, it's been a while since we've had an update on it because there's been very little progress. But we did have an issue on, on these along these lines in the uh, north of Pat Williams and the River Bottom Wildland area. Um, we had a very good experience working with our partners of public services and multi departmental um, efforts uh, with Brawley PD, making sure that people were out of the area. Parks and Rec personnel utilizing heavy uh, Public Works oversaw the installation of a fence that was very beneficial in limiting access mm -hmm. to that area. And we had very good feedback from the residents in that area. Um, and then, of course, the, the issue came up that the uh, finalizing of the project uh, was dependent upon receiving assistance through uh, county inmate programs and assistance in burns. And we're still waiting on that. That, that project is shelved, but it's not forgotten. Uh, we have had some instances recently, uh, you know, not in the homeless area, but working with a developer where we were able to effectively manage the issuance of a burn permit within city limits. It's something we haven't done in quite some time. It's something that we will only do if all of the conditions are right. But we do have a homeless problem. A lot of this has been focused on within our inner area of the city, but we do have it on the periphery in our wildland areas. It's something that we're working on very much. And I also would like to add, you know, very much so for our business owners. I know from the PD, not to speak for Chief Duran's department, but I know from the fire department, code enforcement side, we are very much aware of the business owners that are making efforts and the difference between the absentee business owners. Right. We want to make sure that we're mm -hmm. focusing on those That's areas and that our business owners that are making efforts, they're going to be recognized. They're not going to be targeted. And uh, but the absentee business owners that just have or 
residential abandoned structure owners we know those i've worked with mr escalante and identifying some of those projects and um very much on our radar so we're looking forward to continuing these pro programs thank you chief uh, mr mayor if i can make a comment uh just want to acknowledge that uh, we had some audio technical difficulties uh for the last couple minutes those have been fixed apologies to those who are watching us on live should i repeat uh, all my comments yes we're going to start over from the beginning no but uh, uh we're, we're up and running now so i just uh, the cat one right <laughs> and, and also i would just add to this item i think we need better we have some direction from from council so yeah yeah okay yeah good discussion and, and did you just cut us off that was it uh, no, no, no never, never never no that's good i'm glad you did yeah all right well that was great thanks thank you all for participating in that and uh it is going to take i think putting a lot of heads together to to come up with a solution to at least mitigate some of the the issues that we have that that everybody across the country has right now all right, moving on to, well, I do want to say um, quickly about the appointments to um, boards and commissions. There were two other um, commissions, committees that uh, the Airport Commission and Parks and Recreation Commission, um, who, who are also requiring applicants, but we didn't get enough applications to fill this, the slots that we have available. So I'm almost going to put those back out to re-advertise and uh, we'll bring it back to a meeting in September to fill those other two commissions. So I just want to put that on the record so that it, if anybody knows of anybody that wants to serve on the Airport Commission or the Parks and Rec Commission, that you get the word out to them, too, that those, there are slots available. Item 5G, discussion and potential action to approve the request submitted by Grocery Outlet Incorporated to authorize off-sale beer and wine in accordance to a Type 20 ABC license. This will be presented by our Police Chief, Jimmy Duran. Backup is on pages 263 to 283. <coughs> uh, yes, this was a uh, request submitted by Grocery Outlet, as the mayor stated. Uh, they're seeking their Type 20 ABC license. This is a brand new business. Uh, as far as I know, uh, they're going to start building on, in October of this year. That's the information that I have received. Uh, but from the law enforcement perspective, uh, uh, we review the calls for service in that immediate area where uh, the building is going to be proposed. Uh, and we didn't really see any items or areas of concern that would discourage uh, uh, us from uh, supporting or it doesn't indicate any reason to not approve this request so our recommendation to the board is that we approve this type 20 ABC license for grocery outlet and uh, we do have a representative from Gr grocery outlet on zoom if there are any yes, questions for them uh, for gro grocery outlet easy for me to say there she is any questions from council? I don't have any questions. I'll make the motion to approve yep. the item. I'll second it. All right, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Any abstentions? All right, item carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Chief. Uh, item 5H, discussion and potential action to approve consulting services agreement with Muni Services, LLC for utility user tax compliance, administration, and revenue protection. This is presented by our finance director and city treasurer, Carla Romero. Backup is on pages 284 to 301. Good evening, council members, members of the public. Um, the city has had an engagement with Muni Services since 2017. The contract does expire on, current contract expires July 14th of 2021. So this item is before you to extend the current agreement. A lot of the terms that are in the current agreement um, are simply being re reassigned into this new agreement. Um, it is a five-year agreement. Um, but there is a 30-day termination clause. So if the engagement is not going well or we need to amend the services um, for any reason, we can um, change that at any point in time with the 30-day um, notification to the current vendor. But they're doing a great job. They've been helping us through our utility user tax um, uh, amendments and then also through the ordinance process. So it is critical that we continue those efforts right. uh, that are currently underway. I'll make a motion to approve the item. I'll second. second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed to abstentions? Item carries. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Item 
I, discussion and potential action to approve an actuarial services and technology licensing agreement with GovInvest Incorporated for a not to exceed amount of $23,550. This is also presented by Carla Romero. Backup is on pages 302, 315. Thank you again. Again, this is another contract that the currently ha the city has been engaging in since March of 2016. It is to extend the agreement. Normally, this wouldn't go before you because the annual amount is less than the threshold, the 15,000. Um, but we are proposing to do a multi-year agreement because there are significant savings in doing so. Uh, so if we can solidify that we're going to continue that engagement, we've actually saving a little over $13,000 over those three years. And the great thing about GovInvest is that they not only provide the required um, governmental Accounting Standard Board's um, reports, there's two of them, under GASB 68 and 675, they require the city to do these pension and other post-employment benefit actuarial reports. But on top of that, they do a lot of education. They have an open platform that they share with the city that we can use for long-term projections. So basically what those actuarial, um, very brilliant people use behind the scenes are open for us to use along with this contract. So they, they are a great agency. I've worked with them for years and definitely enjoy uh, their services that they provide. I'll make a motion to approve the item. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? The item carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item 5J, discussion and potential action to authorize the engineering design, construction, support services, and construction management services for city's water treatment plant, raw water storage ponds, liner replacement project to Lee and Rowe Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $103,115 presented by Guillermo Sias, Public Works Director. Backup is on pages 316 to 332. Good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. Guillermo Sias, Public Works Director. The item that uh, it is presented uh, tonight is for the replacement of the raw water pond sedimentation um, uh, liners of the water treatment plant. Uh, this project has been in the queue for about five years um, when we did similar replacement with the sedimentation basins. And these are the ponds that receive all the water from, from IID canal. Uh, where the um, treatment of the water starts uh, are very important because uh, it is in very bad condition, the liner, uh, that includes uh, a fabric underneath, but the, the top layer is the one that receives all the, the heat and, the, and the, the solar light that are, you know, um, damage that. And uh, we had very good experience with Lee and Rowe when they, they did the plants and specifications for the sedimentation basins. So we um, decided to continue doing this project with them. And that's the item that is before you. It is included on the budget for this fiscal year. So mm -hmm. it, is, it is anticipated that uh, this project is, is coming. Okay. Uh, any questions that you might have? <clears throat> I'll make a motion if there's no questions. Been moved. Is second the motion. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? The item carries. <laughs> item 5K, discussion and potential action to authorize the engineering design, construction support services, and construction management services for city's wastewater treatment plant ultraviolet disinfection facility upgrade project to Lee and Rowe Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $149,714, also presented by Guillermo Sias, Public Works Director. Backup is on pages 333 to 350. Uh, yes, this project was mentioned during the budget process uh, in preparation that was coming because uh, the, um, uh, the owner of uh, the proprietary of uh, this brand, uh, Trojan, inform us that they won't be uh, producing more replacement parts in two years. And this is very important um, equipment that disinfect uh, at the very last phase of the wastewater treatment. And it is required to be in compliance with the Regional Water Quality Control Board. So we are, um, as soon as we knew, so we are trying to move forward with this project in, in this case. Uh, it is uh, to um, for Lee and Rowe to prepare the plans and specifications. Later on will come the construction, but uh, we are trying to move forward quick 
with this um, replacement. Uh, recently, we have been having some issues with uh, this, um, some components of this equipment. Even if we uh, recently, probably like two years ago, we replaced the like a screen where they control all the um, functions of uh, the UV system, but we have been replacing it because uh, it's not sustained the heat. So with the, tonight, the, the approval is for the design of um, the replacement of this equipment. Later on will come the construction where we have to install a temporary uh, equipment in the meantime that they construct the permanent. So it, it is a complicated project, but uh, so we, we think that uh, Lee and Rowe will help us a lot for the design and construction management services. Any questions that uh, you have? Yeah. Guillermo, I just, just a comment, just the last couple items. The, again, as you said, they're already approved in the budget, but I want to make sure the public's clear this has been, th these have been critical projects that have been discussed numerous times. So I'm um, just happy we're moving forward. Right. And there's a guarantee that, because that, that UV system is not more than 10 years old, right? I recall we installed that 2011. Right. right. Um, the, the situation was with this type of equipment and that happened with uh, when we replaced the, that screen. Uh, that looks like the, the industry standard is to give us a one-year warranty, and we bought an extended warranty, but was not is not common according to today what they said. But we were able to extend the warranty one more year. But uh, looks like it is uh, common just to have one year warranty. However, the equipment lasts for like this one, 20 years. What's the life expectancy of this equipment? 20, 20 years? years? And 20 is it years, actually right. lasting 20 years? Right. No. Yeah, yeah, 20 years yeah. Is, is, is the, but even, but they don't warranty 20 years. <laughs> right. But no, they, 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 you know, the, the, the useful life, but they don't warranty for that. So they don't, uh, Year 19, they don't replace the equipment, let's say, uh, without cost. No, correct. All right, is there a motion to approve this item? I'll make a motion. I'll second. And moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Guillermo. Item 5L and 5M are being stricken from the agenda, so we'll move on to 5N, discussion and staff direction regarding August 2021 City Council meetings. So, uh, Mayor, if, if I may, um, I've been told historically uh, the council in the past has gone dark during August. Uh, although since I've been on board, that hasn't happened. Uh, we've, we've had at least one meeting every August. But before you is, is that discussion, and we're looking for direction on, on what August looks like. I am, I am only aware of one potential issue that could I, be a conflict. I would say let's stay dark in August. If we need to okay. meet and if we're able to convene, then we will we'll do a special, special meeting. meeting right. yeah. That's, we'll I think, what most of the yeah, plan things that we need, need to do, it. too. So. Okay. All right. Is that uh, we have our direction? That's your direction. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Item 5O, discussion and potential action to approve best step forwards request for cattle call park closure and waiver of the $500 closure fee for a soapbox derby event. This will be presented by our Parks and Recreation Manager, Rachel Fonseca. Backup is on pages 368 to 370. Good evening, members of the Council. Rachel Fonseca, Parks and Recreation Manager. Best Step Forward, which is a program for children who are differently abled, contacted Parks and Recreation about holding a soapbox derby event on August 7th at Catacall Park between the hours of 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. They asked for the race to be held on the exit side of Catacall Park due to its lesser slope and the momentum needed to propel the soapboxes down the hill. The race will start at the point adjacent to the second tiered parking lot, which is the green line on the map at the top, and will end just before the horse stables, which is the red line on the map. 
Spectators will line up along the exit route. Vendors will also be present and located in Rotary Park. Best at Ford will verify their health permits. Best at Ford will contract AmeriCorps to serve as traffic control for the event. They will communicate via walkie-talkie radios. AmeriCorps will be stationed at the entrance of the park and the parking lot located at the southwest side of the park. AmeriCorps will officially barricade the entrance of the park and southwest parking lot prior to the first race to prevent movement of traffic once the race starts. All traffic entering and exiting the park will flow through the entrance side of the park. All vehicles will be parked in the southwest parking lot located next to Rotary Park and any overflow vehicles will be directed to Catacall Drive and the surrounding neighborhood as Cotton Roster is a no parking zone. Best at four will have AMR ambulance on hand for emergency services. They will provide the cooling stations and porta potties. The Catacall Committee has reviewed the plan and submitted a list of borders that will need access and the list will be passed along to Best Step Forward. Insurance has been vetted by personnel and risk management and deemed acceptable. And Best Step Forward is requesting permission from Council to close Catacall Park between the hours of 6 a.m. and 12 p.m. and for Council to approve the waiver of the $500 fee associated with the closure. The, uh, additional comments if I may. Um, the actual event itself and the logistics have been vetted through multiple meetings of our ex with our executive team, which includes uh, fire, police, public works, parks and recs, et cetera. So on the logistics uh, aspect of it, I think we're, we're good, solid there. Um, that's my only comment on that. I think that's important to consider. Uh, I had a couple questions. Go, go ahead. ahead. George, no, George, go ahead, George. No, just my comment is with respect to nonprofits, and I, you know we've made it clear on council with respect to waiver of fees, and I think we need to hold firm on that that we're not going to. So, um, you know, it is taking city resources to 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 do this, and it is um, obviously something that is a, of expense. I know it's greater than five hundred dollars, but we've we've discussed this multiple times over the past several years that we wouldn't, um, you know, be allowing waivers of, of expense and and other nonprofits have paid it as well so yeah I think anyway. before COVID we we had we had a lot of discussions about this and it's it's a tough issue because most of the time these are organizations that are doing good for yeah. throughout the community uh, but the fact is is that you know it's it's not sustainable for us to to uh, you know to continue to pay for the the staff costs that we have and equipment costs that we have to, to do road closures. So, and as, as George mentioned, it's, it's not a full cost recovery. It's, you know, it's just part of it, so. I have yeah. a couple of questions maybe on that. Uh, well, well, first, I have another question related to this. Are they gonna park up here for the event and then have them spectate over here? Are they planning to park them over here and have them go across to spectate? Because that's a long ways. Are they planning to transport them? They said as far as the ADA, they're gonna let them, um, drop them off at the spectator area, and then they're gonna have to go, the cars will be directed to the park area, to the parking lot, but yes, they're probably gonna have to walk the People the that park over here are gonna have to walk all the way over there to that second, that's a long, well, I mean, not for us, not for Donnie and I who are physically fit, but, <laughs> Ramon, but, Ramon. but for most people, Ramon can do it, but, but for, for some people, I think that's a long walk in an August. You left us in no, August. August. Do it or what? <laughs> no, not you guys, okay. August, August he, well, Luke can do it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Can yeah. Do it. <laughs> but no, but to walk that far is pretty, pretty hot in the summer, you're probably gonna need the ambulance a lot quicker than, yeah. than what you might otherwise, because that's if true. they're not ADA, then, they, then they're going to have to park over there and walk. And I just don't think that's a really good idea, but, but maybe I'm wrong. You know, I mean, I, I don't think I would want to, well, I might walk that far in the summer, but it's still, it's difficult. Um, the other thing was, how much are, are they charging? I, I need to know how much they're going to make off the event before I'm, before I'm willing to make a decision about $500 or no $500. Is, is, it, is it something where they're not charging anybody? Is it something where they're planning to make a lot of money? Or are they not going to make any money off the event? I guess that's my question. From my understanding, the cost for the soapboxes are going to be provided by a sponsor. Okay. That is my understanding. OK. And are they? So, and then when you have the vendors here, they're going to be selling items. Are they going to be sharing that profit? Well, it's all going to be nonprofit, right? So, Correct. So they're not going to be necessarily making mm -hmm. a lot of profit. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my concern is how much they're going to charge 
how much they're planning to make off this. Because if they're only going to make $500, and it seems unfair to me that we charge them $500, although we charge everybody a certain amount of money. Now, if they're planning to make quite a bit of money off this event, then I think that the $500 is certainly reasonable because it certainly doesn't recover all our costs. So I have some questions regarding I, that. I think with so. respect to cost, I mean, whenever you're planning any event, and I've planned many, you know, so you, you have to incorporate, and I've planned them through nonprofits, right? You have to incorporate the expenses too. So it's like whether it's nonprofit doesn't mean for loss, you know, and so no. I think that that has Got to be that. considered as well. And it's obviously he heavily involved by city resources, you know, from, the, from what you've described. So it's not that I'm anti anything, it's just that, you know, we have made it clear over the past several years that we are working to make sure that at the very least we're recovering some cost. And so I think it's unfair for city resources, city staff to be utilized heavily, heavily. It's not a small effort and, you know, and then not, not, uh, not do what we've been doing with other nonprofits. I think that that's just not the right message we want to send. You know, that's just, mm -hmm. and, and with respect to how much you're making or not, I mean, that's, when you plan an event, that's just what you deal with. Whether it's sponsorship or whether it's whoever, I've 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 had multiple events and I've been in charge of multiple events um, and I've run through nonprofits and you know I consider the expenses. In fact, even the last time uh, Council Member Wharton and I um, had an event, we did pay the the through a nonprofit. We did pay the the uh, the closure fee and there was a fee for it. So you know it's just we do it just as. It, it makes yeah. mention on the map there. It says we will not be doing any order of business for profit. This is strictly an event to provide positive fund for the community. Hmm. So it's not a fundraiser. So it's, it's, it's to hold the event. It's not a fundraiser. Yeah, it's just it's That's to have the event. Okay. August seventh. Seventh. Yeah. Which is a Saturday. Yes. You know, the city is not a sponsor of this event either. If we were, that's a different story, but they're not asking for that. They're asking for us to waive a fee. That's a different approach, there, too. Is there a representative that? here, I take it? No? No. Okay. No. Okay. And this is for which group? For Best Step Forward. It's a program out of Calipatria for children who are differently abled. It's that means uh, they are somewhat uh -huh. disabled, or so, I think that's a bad term now, but mm -hmm. differently abled mm -hmm. means that they have some issues. Yes. Yeah, okay. 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 Challenges. 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 Mm -hmm. some challenges, not issues. Okay. Okay. So uh, as far as a, I, want to be I might be in favor of just only because I think we just did for COVID, if yes. I remember, with Little League and, and maybe a few others. So, I mean, maybe just coming out of COVID. Um, we, you know, we didn't. We wanted to be real clear. We weren't setting a precedent. We we had some extenuating circumstances. So I don't know. I know things are back open, but uh, um, it seems to me August is a tough time to have any kind of public event. <laughs> it, I, it would be my only thing. And I I, I also think when we decided to stick firm um, pre-COVID with, with with these expenses. Um, we did expect these to come to us. There is still that case by case. So I, my, my my only it's not an argument. Just just simply to have this event in August as a community benefit um, for this particular, you know, this 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 group. Um, maybe I don't know. Counter to that would be if there's a lot of resources costing the city and us taxpayers, maybe thousands of dollars. Then yeah. um, maybe to your point, yeah. uh, Councilmember. How Nava, heavily yeah. involved is Parks and Rec in this particular yeah. with this particular event? Uh, we're just going to be charging for the uh, opening the restroom, and that would be all. Okay, but staff wouldn't be on site. There's so the, just the restroom part. There's our the opportunity restroom. costs that aren't mm -hmm. quantified as well, where uh, public works and PD getting set up, doing the, the yeah, moving the closures in and out. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. uh, not only are they hard costs, there's opportunity costs where we're, we're taking away. We're from, taking away? Yeah. So. I mean, there is that, so you know. Yeah. With yeah. And, I, I, I would not yeah. be yeah. opposed yeah. to what Council Member Wharton is saying uh, with respect to, you know, <clears throat> coming out of COVID. I, I'm understanding of that as well, but um, again, it's just those things that we do have to consider. Yeah, you know, these are this isn't like a city event. If we were a sponsor within that and we're participating, and it's to our benefit too, that's a different story. But it's just it's one thing. You know, we decide to move forward with with the waiver of the fee. We just have to consider the fact that those requests will continue to come. Well, you know, and so it's just not. You know, and, and we already know our circumstances. And so, I believe they will continue to yeah. come anyway. But, but, but I mean, we, we no also said we that do. we were going to hold firm. And, you know, I know it's, it's yeah. at our discretion, but it's just, yeah. I'm open to it, yeah. but it's just those, 
once we start opening that door again, it happens and it happens. And for years, we didn't collect. I, no, I know. And we had requests all the time. I, I think without COVID and coming into the fall, the prime time, the October events, October, November, December, January, for all those, you know, kind of prime months, um, where, where they truly are, there's a pretty big fundraising component to yeah. it. You know, that, that, that's, I, that, that would be my only argument. This, this is in August. This is the first time. Um, the diagram looked pretty, um, pretty cute. I don't know who did that, but no. That was a city engineer, <laughs> Rachel Fonseca, that drew that. That's what I'm saying. Why is city yeah. staff requesting, a, you know, yeah. a waiver? And why isn't the group yeah, requesting the waiver? Yeah, that, that, it's the, like, the city staff is not requesting. Yeah. It, it is. We, we have to. But they're presenting it. You see what I'm saying? Why Why are they not here asking? Like, hey, this is what we want to do. It's a yep. community event. It's yep. for to benefit these children. They're not here doing that. That's Perhaps. what you know, and it's it's an expectation, yeah. and that's what you know. Anyway, I um, yeah. table is item. Why don't why don't why yeah? I, I tend to agree with with that, Ramon. Why don't we table this? We're going to come back on the twentieth. Uh, have them come and give their presentation as to what this is going to be and how much they're going, how much they're planning to raise with this function. Uh, are they planning to raise anything? Is it simply a community event? Are there, are there, is there some special reason for helping these children? Is there something we can do on that? And we're going to come back on a meeting on the 20th. I think we have time to have them come or at least send us something in writing that, that gives a little more details about this. Gives them time to raise the 500 bucks. Yes, if, if, if that's required, <laughs> if that's what we're going to require, it does give them time to think about that. Yeah. Or maybe it's a different amount. Maybe we waive part of it and, and maybe we charge them part of it. I mean, there's a little, we have quite a few options there and, and I tend to, I, I just like more information, I think, before I make this decision. Okay. All right, so you want to table it till the 20th? That's fine. To make a motion on that, or you just I'll I make mean, a the, motion the, to the, table it. To the, the, um, the event itself is taking place. It's just a matter of the waiver, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. Right. We're not. And, and I need to make a bigger thing of it. It's just quite honestly, they're not here. Yeah. They're not asking for it. Well, and there's yeah. a number of nonprofits also yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's important that you you, you know. do. So it's the direction that the uh, the table it for discussion on the waiver of the fee only that we don't yeah. have an issue with the event. Mm -hmm. I don't have any Are we approving issue. the event? I thought we were just approving a waiver. It's just the waiver. Just I the think waiver. The event yeah. has already been waiver. approved yeah. by Parks and yeah. Rec, right? Just yeah. want to make sure that we're. Do we need a motion to table it? No, we just table it. Yeah, motion, motion to table. Motion. Okay, a second. Second. All those in favor of tabling? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any oh, opposed no, abstentions? We can just table uh, it. <laughs> it's tabled yeah. one way or another. I mean, you want a freebie, you got to come ask for it. Yes. I mean, I agree with that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, I guess if you don't ask, the answer is always no. So that's yeah. why people ask. It's free publicity. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to item six, departmental reports. And this is going to be an update on parks and recreation programs presented by Rachel Fonseca, our parks and recreation manager. So, uh, sorry, uh, let me frame it up for you. Um, uh, this is a ser another uh, presentation in our series of departmental reports that we've been cycling through periodically. There's been a lot, a lot going on in Parks and Rec uh, with new programs, reopening of, of sites, and I, uh, we think it's important that we let the public know all the good work that all of public, uh, public work, excuse me. Parks and Rec. <laughs> You're doing good work too, Guillermo. Uh, Parks and Rec staff are, are doing and, and, and uh, uh, educate the public about all we got going on. Thank you, uh, Rachel. Okay, so good evening, members of the council. Rachel Fonseca, Parks and Recreation Manager. Just a brief summary of the department's activities. We've been very, very busy in Parks and Rec. It's been a very eventful four months, many activities. On the park side, we opened the splash pad on the 29th, and everything is going well. Lots of smiles out there with the kids playing. Miguel, our parks coordinator, and the park staff have been doing a great job implementing our plans, keeping the parks and facilities looking nice, and making sure everything is running well. On the recreation side, we opened up our pool on June 14th. Lap swim is going well. Uh, we opened up our summer swim programs on June 21st. Public swim is going well. Family swim is going well. The swim lessons, all swim classes are full, and we had to change some advanced classes to beginners to com accommodate the beginner's request because there was a large request. We reopened our Elks facility on June 21st, and that went well. Uh, we had our 3rd of July free family swim sponsored by the IID. We had snow cones and music. It was calm, but it went very well. And today was our first day of summer camp. It was a very business mo busy morning. All but five registrants showed up. Lots of smiles and happiness and laughter that could be heard. 
Linda Santos, our rec coordinator and our summer day camp staff, have done a great job uh, developing the reopening plans, implementing the plans, and getting everyone signed up and situated in our programs. Uh, senior Center, we reopened our Senior Center. We held our Welcome Back Seniors on July 2nd, and that went very well. Amanda Benavides, our Senior Center coordinator, did a great job planning the Senior Center Welcome Back. On the Human Resources side, I'd like to mention Shirley from Personal and Risk Management, who did an outstanding job with our recruitment process and helping us get the staff that we needed to be ready for our camps, our swim programs, our senior center reopen, and all of our reopening events. So thank you, Ms. Shirley. Uh, on other items, we had a site visit from the state parks for the grant we submitted on Inahosa last week. We hope to have an answer on the award in September. Uh, we renewed leases, and we're going to be applying for some more grants. Overall, things are going very well in Parks and Rec. Very busy and excited for upcoming events that we are in the process of planning. Um, on on the uh, comment on the state grant, that was the Hinojosa project uh, a few months back. Uh, a site visit, while not a... Uh, uh, a confirmation that we're going to receive the funds. It is. A, it's a great step that we made it through that process. Uh, during the walkthrough with uh, lots of participants from the city uh, staff, uh, she met the the representative. I forget her name. Uh, made a comment that there's for this phase of Prop 68, uh, there's 300 and my round figures. I'm gonna say 350 million dollars that was available. Over 2.4 billion dollars <laughs> have been applied for. So it's still a little bit of a uphill battle, but hey, we're still in the running. Yeah. So I think that was important. So. Okay, that is all. And I, I do want to oh. thank you, uh, Rachel, for the work that you're doing. I know you didn't mention it in your report, but I will mention it. I've worked closely with you over the past several weeks uh, on different events, and I appreciate the work that you're doing on behalf of the city. I know you're not here to pat yourself on the back, but I'm going to do it for you. So good job. Welcome um, to the city. You've been doing a good job for the past several months. and. Uh, you know, it, it's starting to show. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Thanks for the yeah, presentation. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm going to throw in. I'm just. I'm going to piggyback on that. Thank you, because I know we met very early on on a potential of a future project. Um, I know I haven't rounded back on that, so don't worry. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Eyes got big. Um, still got some more work um, we need to do around that, but. Uh, <laughs> um, triathlon. I just want to throw it out publicly. I've been talking about it for four years, but um, our triathlon um, out, outside is our <laughs> first in the valley, so I think. But outside of that, though, just you, um, you know, the pool facility and some of the earlier facilities that open up. I know the public's really enjoying it. So again, a lot of comments. If you're just using any of our um, parks and rec facilities from uh, many members of the public. So again, thank you, Rachel and the staff, for making that happen. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Before we uh, leave item six, I would like to ask uh, Chief Duran and Chief York if you would give us a quick update on, on what all happened over the weekend with fireworks and and fires. And fires. If there was any in-town fires. Sorry for the, to spring that on you. They walk up like they're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not, actually. <laughs> I'm not in trouble, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, we actually had 41 calls for service from the police side, uh, in which resulted in 14 Whoa. Whoa. citations. Uh, that was impressive, 41. right? That yeah, he yeah. went backwards. <laughs> right? yeah. He was blown away by the news. <laughs> uh, he was blown away. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, I think we uh, we had this new ordinance that just got in place in the past. Uh, with the old ordinance, we are not able to uh, issue citations. I know it's been uh, problematic for people in our, in, the, in our city. Uh, and we tried to educate people as well, not just give them the citation, but let them know why we're doing this. Because a lot of times we, we're thinking it's just because we're annoying somebody. Yeah. But there's really more reasons uh, why we don't want these fireworks. Number one, we have uh, little kids who get scared by the fireworks. Of course, uh, we all have our beloved canines that get scared, mm -hmm. people that are mentally ill. Uh, we have individuals who serve in country and they have PTSD, uh, and of course people that have mental problems. So a lot of times it's just one, it's not just one issue why we do this, and I think that's what we're trying to uh, ensure that people understand. You know, usually people think, oh, it's my annoying neighbor that's complaining. No, it's 
It's really six issues that I just mentioned. Yeah. So I hope that whoever is listening today understands why we're doing this and why it's important that we, uh, you know, we, we follow the law. It's not just because uh, it's not about us. It's about everybody. We're a community, and yeah, I hope that everybody yeah. on the next go around, we did cite 14 individuals, uh, and I don't say that in a proud manner. I, I really, uh, as a matter of fact, I was talking, I believe it's our, our city manager. That I was saying I, I feel awful, you know, when we cite individuals but unfortunately sometimes that's the only way uh, we understand uh, so so I hope that people do understand and we don't have to uh, the next time when it comes around we don't have to cite people that just you know people just understand and follow the rules uh, hopefully we won't have the same problem in uh, at the end of the year I know for New Year's we tend to have fireworks again and I'm hoping that uh, uh, that they understand we're gonna be out there and we are going to uh, issue citations based on this ordinance that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Chief. I would like to say that I thought you guys did a fantastic job. They cited somebody down the street from me. Um, I know the police were out there in force. I think you had a helicopter. There was a helicopter flying. I don't know if it was yours or not, but but it, but they were they were doing the job. And I do believe that we did dampen down I think so the too. amount of overall fireworks I think so for too. this for this year. And, and I and I appreciate all your effort in that. Thank you. On the fire side, uh, I would like to again thank our partners in the in the police department because they're really the ones that are putting an end to this. Hopefully, um, a lot of the the things that we come across is very subjective. Or there more this year or not? Um, you know, memories tend not to run for a year. I will say, in terms of response, there was no major issues reported. It was a very busy weekend for us, nonetheless. Um, awaiting for the individual reports to come out. If we had any minor issues related, uh, none were reported in the in the verbal turnovers. Um, it is important. I think uh, it was mentioned that you know we do have our new city ordinance. I feel that it curtailed some of at least some of the fireworks that we saw, the illegal fireworks that we saw happen and hopefully that we get this to progress uh, chief duran brought up some good points uh something that um that was shared quite a bit on some of the social media platforms fourth of july is the number one day for pets to go missing um so we have that issue that that burdens our animal control it burdens our police department as well in some cases it does burden the fire department thankfully not ours this year um, we do have a lot of veterans we do have a lot of people that have issues with these things and just frankly, people that are annoyed about it. And we're looking towards coming up New Year's Eve. And I think it's important that we remind all of our public that um, while safe, the illegal fireworks, anything that leaves the ground, the aerials, et cetera, those are illegal year round. They're not legal for 4th of July. They're not legal in the state of California. Um, however, it is important to note that for, uh, in terms of Sydney ordinance, even safe and sane that you may purchase out of state are not legal on New Year's. Uh, day and that's a big year that or big time of the year where we see all the formats of fireworks so it's something we're going to continue to work it with pd and build on our new ordinance and hopefully we'll see just a decrease in the coming years a lot of it's going to come down to just education mm -hmm. and just uh just encouraging people to um enjoy themselves and and uh in a way that doesn't um you know encroach onto their neighbors yeah Thank you. I, I would like to thank the, the press. I think Ivy Press and uh, Desert Review ran some articles on that prior to the holiday. Uh, we had good Facebook coverage, I thought, and then the sign out front of the police station indicating people. I think people knew. They were aware. I think, I think we got the word out more than what we have in the past. And I think it was a combined effort by everyone, but I do think the word got out there. I, I have to think that there were fewer incidences and, you know and i i should add one one last thing again um it didn't come across ours it even still would be something we don't discuss very much i will say in very recent years uh within our valley we have had one extremely significant injury resulting in the loss of limbs permanently of a valley resident it was it within our city but these fireworks are illegal and and even when you go to areas where they're legal to purchase by the general public they're they're labeled as for use by professionals only and unfortunately there is a valley resident that is missing limbs and mobility because of illegal fireworks and that's just within recent years and there's also a deceased hockey player professional hockey player that that got i think injured or, or he got killed by a by a mortar type that is uh, correct. firework he, um, this this time details were shared on, on some of the uh, fire fire fighting pages and uh there is a hockey player and it 
the initial reports is that a mortar round somehow hit him in his chest and he died a short time later. Yep. Uh -huh. So it's so, worth so mentioning. So they are very dangerous, and in town they're certainly even more dangerous. And so I just don't think they should like be. Dynamite, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. Right yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for those updates. <coughs> item 7, informational items. 7A is a record of building permits for May 2021 in the City of Raleigh, prepared by Oscar Escalante, interim building official. It's on pages 371 and 372. And item 7B is a monthly staff report for July 2021 presented by Shirley Bonias, our personnel and risk management administrator. And that's on page 373. Thank you, Honorable Mayor, Council Member <laughs> Shirley Bonias, personnel and risk management. As you can see, it changed. With our new fiscal year, so did our numbers change. So we are currently recruiting for 10 permanent positions. All temporaries have been hired. So that's why you have a Parks and Recs department, and pretty soon a library is going to be opening. So we're a fully staffed in library as well. So it's been a very good month. Uh, we do, are down four police officers and one dispatcher. We did have interviews. Um, backgrounds are ch challenging, to say the least. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Shirley. Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> Item 8, City Council Member Reports. We'll start with... Councilman Wharton. Um, thank you, and um, certainly hope everyone had a great Fourth of July with uh, family for those, whether you were here in the community, Valley, or wherever you may have been. Um, and I certainly did. Um, just between the last meeting, I did recently have a good discussion. Um, speaking, I know our chief's been up here presenting a lot, but with our police chief, with respect to the future on um, some of the many initiatives that he's been working on. Part of my call or our discussion was I wasn't going to be able to make the meeting, unfortunately, that uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and our city ma uh, manager made. But um, I think that kind of proactive engagement um, also relates to a topic that um, Councilmember Nava brought up about um, bringing all, all the departments together. So again, um, more, more to come. Uh, I do want to, speaking of law enforcement, um, extend um, on behalf of the city our heartfelt um, prayers and the loss uh, within the sheriff's uh, community. Uh, we lost a deputy sheriff, uh, Mr. Anthony, or Deputy Anthony Redondo, uh, in the line of duty. So um, that was horrific news as I was out of town for that. But uh, um, our, certainly our hearts and prayer from the city of Brawley and uh, all of us here on council uh, to the sheriff community and to the Redondo family. Um, outside of that, uh, Mr. Mayor, just uh, looking forward uh, to uh, the many things that we have on tap as everything's opening up. So uh, that's all I have to report today. Thank you, Donny. Councilman Castro. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy that one for a while. Uh, yeah, just like uh, as Councilman, uh, Councilmember Warren said, I hope everyone had a happy Fourth of July and a safe Fourth of July. Um, I know it's a great holiday for, for always for our family to celebrate. Uh, as I can remember, you know, we've always celebrated the holiday. Um, I want to thank I want to thank the city of Calexico publicly. Um, we have had this event, and everyone's aware of it. It's been all over the paper. Um, city of Calexico opened their doors to us. It was very welcoming. Um, set us up with the press conference. So I just want to thank them, their city manager, um, just just for being so uh, reactive and 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 and, and welcoming. <coughs> so and I want to appreciate. I want to thank uh, Councilmember Nava. And, and our mayor for showing up to that event. It was it was wonderful. And I just let you guys know, I, I don't want to go on that, so that's more of a personal deal, but I do want to let you guys know the city of Broadway has been on national news lately, so yeah, <laughs> kudos to us. Uh, that's all I have, Mr. Mayor, and, and, and uh, God willing, I'll, I'll be here uh, for the next meeting, so. All right, thank you. Thank you. Councilman Nava. Uh, so I was able to uh, participate and um, uh, visit the Elks Youth Building reopening, and that's the boxing gym, along with La Gente Car Club. But I do want to thank city staff, Parks and Rec, um, our fire department for placing a unit out there as well, and, and Brawley PD for just participating. It, it just, it's great to see that facility reopen. I know staff was working on it for about a week out there, just painting, re rehabbing the building a little bit, refreshing it. And it's just, you know, inviting the public back in. And it was not just the, the city facility that was opening, it was more of a message that Brawley's back and we're open and we're trying to get things started again. So I think that was a really important message that was relayed. And I do appreciate 
the IV Press and the Desert Review for covering it. And, uh, you know, without the media, quite honestly, our message, it can go on social media and everything else, but it's really important when the message is out in, in, in the news. So we appreciate that very much. Um, on another opening, also participated and, and was able to attend the Senior Center reopening. That's another major milestone for the city. It had been closed for quite some time, and it's been well over a year. And so, you know, seeing the seniors back uh, up and running, they had approached me a little while back, sent me a video, in fact, of several of them gathering privately, and they were just asking for it to be reopened. Thankfully, city staff was able to accommodate that request, and they worked really hard, Parks and Rec uh, staff did, and, and just city staff in general. So I appreciate that very much. They're happy. And um, I know that, you know, that they're able to participate and engage with their friends and their families again. So that's, it's just great to, to, to be out there and support them. I always said, um, and I mentioned the comment there, if you ever want to have a good time or get in a little bit of trouble, go hang out with at the senior center. You're, you're sure to do both, you know what I mean? So they're, they're good people. They like having a good time. But um, also met with some representatives of Chelsea Investment that are looking to build a facility uh, here in the city of Brawley. Met with them along with the... Uh, uh, Council Mayor Pro Tem uh, Couchman, and uh, that was just an interesting conversation. They're they're soon to approach us again here, um, and uh, participated ICTC meeting on behalf of the city. Also, I, I did get a request with respect to maybe doing some striping on Main Street, uh, East Main Street. They're just uh, and I've received the the comment before, yes. but that's just something I think we need to consider just uh, for for uh, for people traveling at night. That was just a it was a concern slash complaint, um, and so that was just something that they brought up to me. A, a member of the public did, and I do want to congratulate uh, Council Member Castro on his efforts that have been recognized throughout the country. So congratulations on that. I know you've been working hard and walking hard. Uh, so um, congratulations to you. And I was happy to be able, in fact, it was an honor for me to be able to support you along with uh, Mayor uh, Hamby in Calexico. And uh, I would agree that they were very um, receptive and welcoming. So uh, thanks to the city of Calexico. But quite honestly, thanks to you, your friends and your associates, I know that you're getting a lot of the recognition, but they're walking alongside you. And yeah, so, it's yeah, it's a team of people. So congratulations to them as well. <laughs> and um, good luck. <laughs> Thank you all. All right, Mayor Pro Tem Couchman. Uh, yes. Um, Sorry. Okay. I met with a high school student uh, regarding a project that she's developing at the high school related to helping students as they start this new senior year, uh, students at the high school that may be having some uh, issues, challenges, uh, problems, either emotional or educational, and she's working on a project with them, and I did provide her some input and told her some people that she needed to go talk to, and I did ask her to uh, concentrate on the school. She talked about community, but I think that's too large a project for a senior as she's getting ready to go to college after this year. And so I told her, please attempt to concentrate on the school and the school students. And I think that would be more valuable to everybody concerned. I did, um, I met with the Chelsea Investment along with uh, Council Member Nava, and we did provide some issues, some, some information to them. And they'll be coming back to us with some requests and, and we'll be dealing with those as a full council at that time. I did attend the Juneteenth, uh, I was invited to the Juneteenth celebration in El Centro, um, and I was able to provide a display of Civil War uh, type memorabilia, and I also was requested to read the Emancipation Proclamation, and it was my honor to do that. And so that was a great event over in El Centro, pretty well attended and for a summer event, and uh, it, it went really, really well. And then I also attended the Elks Youth Building reopening and the boxing. I did speak to somebody today, and they said there's a movement on to attempt to get some air conditioning in there that the city would not have to do, that, that it would be provided by private sector sources. And so hopefully that will come to fruition, And because uh, they do need some air conditioning, I think, in that facility. It is warm, and um, if they could get some form of that, that would be great. And I hope as a community we can come together and help them with that. And with that, that's my report. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I won't right. say the other thing. All right. Okay, uh, I got to to s meet with uh, business owners, along with Chief Duran, and uh, and that was uh, that was a very good meeting because there was Q and A. There was room for people to to voice their concerns and and for Chief Duran to uh, line out some of the solutions that they're working toward in the police department. Um, Tyler and I met with. Um, quite a few developers, contractors, 
um, over the last several weeks to, to work on some issues um, with some projects. And we brought in um, some public works staff, Guillermo Sias, and, and, uh, and it was very, it was very helpful to see how when we, when we can sit down together and work through a problem that um, it can remove some of the, the log jams or some of the misunderstandings. And that's, so it's something I appreciate about our city manager is that, um, is that he's trying to think outside the box on, on some of this stuff, some of the, some of the issues that we've had of, of reputation that we've developed over the years of, of not being friendly toward business or development. Um, Tyler is working to, to try to change that perception, so I appreciate that. Um, I, was, I was honored to welcome Councilman Castro um, to Calexico and support him in his endeavor uh, walking the border. Um, and happy to attend the Senior Center reopening along with some fellow council members and uh, honor one of the uh, uh, one of the users of the Senior Center was turning 100 years old and so we honored her with a, a proclamation. It was, it was her day in Brawley. Uh, Ms. Antonia Padilla Herrera. Herrera. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I said it just about like that. There you go. In the proclamation. <laughs> <laughs> just about. <laughs> just, just about. <laughs> Uh, I mean, and then you were in Calexico later in the day, so right. I mean, you yeah. were able to practice even more. <laughs> That's true. That was great because they had approached me a few months ago, and it was on my radar too, but they never came back, so I'm glad I took care of that. Yeah. That is pretty awesome. And uh, attended a Parks and Recreation Commission meeting, which we hadn't had one of those in, I don't know, 15 months probably, so it was, uh, it was nice to be back together with that group of people. And then I enjoyed the 4th of July, Independence Day in, in our neighborhood. It seems like most of the time I'm out of town, I just want to be somewhere cooler where I don't have to watch, you know, neighbors launch illegal fireworks and, and worry about, do I need to be the one to call the police? So um, I usually leave town, but I stayed <laughs> around this time. And we had a nice little neighborhood party in our, our little park there. And uh, nobody brought illegal fireworks. It was all safe and sane. We even had a fire dancer show up and fire dancer. yeah do fire some dancer. do some moves it was pretty cool so we all had a good time so uh yeah it's a lot of activity in the how city of Burley. dance again how so the fire dance? Dance? Oh. Oh, okay <laughs> um, Thank you, sure. <laughs> yeah um a lot of phone calls and texts and communication from uh you know different concerned citizens about different uh projects going on inside the city so we are always doing something. And, and sometimes that means we miss events like family birthday parties or whatever. Like, so we have to bring them to city council to <laughs> put them in front of you. But so that's what you get sometimes. So. I'm going to do that for Sam next time. Are you? <laughs> it's coming. But yeah. We're dark that month. Uh, uh, well, special meeting just for you, Sam. Yeah. There you go. I don't know. <laughs> August 15th. <laughs> All right. We'll remember that. It's August 11th. We have a double party. Oh, yeah? <clears throat> Okay, we will move on to item nine, city attorney report. So, uh, council, I was asked to report, and I guess the cat's out of the bag, but we've told the cell tower folks that they're going to have to uh, apply for a conditional use permit. So, uh, it's, it's the balls act back in their court to do that. Um, there has been some discussion about our process uh, uh, with respect to real estate negotiations taking vote in closed session. I, uh, received some criticism about that from other uh, public attorneys in the valley and I had to point out to them that uh, while they're the way they do in the county is correct so is the way we do it uh, the Brown Act specifically provides for that specifically provides what you report when you do that and uh, that's exactly what we did so there's no Brown Act violation and just wanted to make that perfectly clear I think you, uh, you were provided uh, the research on that so Okay, thank you. Item 10, City Clerk Report. Nothing except um, I'll be taking the resolutions to the county as soon as you come in and sign them, okay. hopefully tomorrow. All right. That's it. Alma, Alma, can I ask a question? This way? Sure. With respect to uh, the league, uh, have the rest of the council, have they signed up if they're going to be attending the California League? No, been? only you. Okay. Nobody else. That is taking place uh, in person mm -hmm. this year, so I think it's just I important to consider. When is that again? What Se are the dates September? September. September. September, September, September 19th. And, and Hold the on. hotels are check. filling up. Yes. Quickly, so. What's September, what? Yeah, I think uh, somewhere that I should 
it, you, it, I think it, as September, a new workout, you need to be there. Twenty second through the twenty fourth. It's in Sacramento. Sacramento. Yeah. Um, I think you're the delegate, I'm going. and I. I George, I mean, uh, Councilman Wharton, I think. Yeah, in, and, in, and isn't it uh, Councilmember Nava and and no. Wharton? I don't know what particular order, but those are the two. What uh, uh, the, the representatives, delegates. the delegates for the League of Cities. Uh -uh. I think it's Castro and Castro and, 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 and Wharton. I'm sorry, Wharton and Castro. I'm it's Wharton. Okay. 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 Sorry, apologies. Yeah. So just let me know. Um, we do have a council meeting on the 21st. We could change it to a week before or a week okay. after, or we want to meet Monday, whichever. If you guys no, want to leave on Tuesday, next or, year when yeah. I'm the mayor. just let me know so I can make the arrangements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then from, and I, I got to check my schedule too because I, I have to be there, and then I have an industry professional industry event in Las Vegas, so I need to kind of get some things going. Go on. from there to there. So I'll you anyway. next year. That's all. Okay. Thanks, Alma. You're welcome. Okay, we will move move into. Closed session, session, item 11. All right. Thanks for coming. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Good, Good nice, man. All right.